It's not decided by vote. It's not decided by a sports writer or we media types. It's on the field. Wittenberg, of course, a veteran in the Stag Bowl. They won here in 1973. They defeated Ithaca in 1975, 28 to nothing. And they were in this championship one year ago when they lost to Baldwin Wallace by a count of 24 to 10. We'll be back to take a look at the Wittenberg Tigers from Springfield, Ohio, as college football today continues after this message. By now, almost everybody's heard about the incredible Black & Decker workmate, about how it makes almost any hard job a lot easier, like planing, hammering, sawing, almost anything. But what most people don't know about the incredible workmate is now you can get a single height model for as little as $40. 40 That's right. A Black & Decker workmate for about $40. Hooray! That's really incredible. It's no secret that quality mechanics rely on quality parts. So when you see this sign in garages and service stations, you know the mechanics who work there care. Care enough about you to rely on Napa parts. Lots of Napa parts are better than your car's original parts. So for parts and service you can depend on, look for this Napa sign and the Napa mechanic. He cares. Napa, we help keep America moving. The Amos Alonzo Stag Bowl from Phoenix City, Alabama, Wittenberg against Ithaca. The Wittenberg Tigers are unbeaten in 1979. They have run up 11 consecutive victories, hoping to make it 12 this afternoon. And John Dockery, the leader of this Wittenberg offense, is a senior quarterback, Chuck Delaney. Chuck Delaney, number 12, not a really big quarterback, only 5'10", 180 pound senior, but he's accounted for over 2,000 yards himself passing and rushing. I mean, you see incredible statistics for a quarterback. Let's take a look at him in action now. Chuck Delaney is a guy that is a better runner than a thrower. Here you see him running the ball and taking it in for a touchdown. He scored 14 touchdowns rushing. He's a, he's a leader of that high-powered offense. I mean, an offense that averages 435 yards a game and scores 36 points a game. And Chuck Delaney is the guy that makes it happen. John, he can throw when necessary. He can throw, and theirs isn't a finesse passing game. They're going to throw play action, and they're going to throw the bomb. And you see him throw one here, a long one, to his favorite wide receiver, number 83, Cliff Davis. Davis, by the way, has a 25 per catch average. And occasionally he'll go to the short man, he's tied in. He can go to the short man, that's Dave Frazier. But Wittenberg has come this far on the run. They live by the run, and they have a running back, a super one, Tracy King, number 21. He's strong, he's tough, he's durable. And you know, for the last three years, he's played behind Davey Merritt, who is a great running back. And this year, he's gotten a chance to run with the ball. He's gained over 1,000 yards and five and a half yards a carry. Take a look at the season stats for Tracy King. 1,050 yards, as John just told you, a 5.5 yards per carry average. Now, defensively, Wittenberg will line up in basically a 5-2, and the two keys, I guess, are Joe Govern, the defensive tackle, and John Saxon in the defensive secondary. You don't have to say much about number 73, Joe Govern, except he's the best defensive tackle in the Ohio Conference. John Saxon's free safety, five interceptions, their defense allows eight points a game. Really strong defensively. You know, John, one of the keys to any kind of an athletic program, I would guess, is stability. And in Dave Mauer, the head coach, they've got a man who's been at this school for 25 years, the last 10 as the head coach. You know, I think his middle name should be Victory because look at his record. 98 wins, 14 losses, and three ties. Winningest coach, active coach in Division Three. There's a quick look at the Wittenberg University Tigers. We'll be back to take a look at the Ithaca College Bombers as college football today continues after this. Oh, honey, I'm waiting. We were going to play our little game. Oh, I have to work late. You promised to play Mastermind. I try to break your code, you try to break mine. You'll have to play Mastermind without me. Play Mastermind without you? With new electronic Mastermind, you can play alone, honey. I already programmed in my secret code. New electronic mastermind by Invicta, a game of cunning and logic to play with others. Or alone. I broke the code. Such a mastery. You used to say that to me. You know the ski cheering expert. What am I doing wrong? Uh, let's talk about it over beer. Better yet, over a Michelob light. A light beer since when? Since Michelob light. The rich, full-bodied taste of Michelob light. Compare it to any beer you like. This Michelob light's one fine beer. Now, if I can only raise my scores. Hey, you want really high scores? Yeah. Go back to golf. Michelob light. <laughs> Compare the taste to any beer you like. Yeah. 
Ithaca College is no stranger to this national championship competition. In 1974, they were beaten by Central Iowa by two points. And in 1975, defeated by this same Wittenberg team, 28-0 for the national title. In 1979, the Ithaca College Ball Club is 10-2, and two, but both of those losses came to larger Division II schools. And the leader of their offense is Doug Benchko. Doug Benchko uh, is more of a classic a classic quarterback. He stands 6'3", weighs 200 pounds, and he's had a terrific year. Here you see Benchko dropping back the pass for a completion. But the thing Benchko, I think, does better than throw the ball is turn the corner. I mean, he's got exceptional speed for a quarterback. And if he gets in the clear, he'll run away from defensive backs. He's got some super receivers, Jim Duncan. He's got another one named Jarvey. They're going to use three wide receivers today because they believe that they have to be able to throw the ball against a fine Wittenberg defense. Good running backs, one of whom is Bob Ferrigno. Bob Ferrigno, here he is. He's small, he's 5'10", but he's a fire plug type. There he is taking it in for a touchdown. He's one of those guys that's loaded to the ground, weighs 200 pounds, and he'll run right over you. He's had a terrific year. John Niccolo is also back there, and we'll look at Ferrigno one more time as he goes in for the score. And John Dockery, they have a legitimate All-American linebacker in John Laper, whom we will see here on uh, special teams coverage. If you watch here, you'll see a punt, and you'll see number 47. Watch closely, and watch this hit. Bang! 47 loves to hit. The pro scouts are interested. He'll have a shot at pro ball. They have some other good linebackers, too. Number 58, Bill Rosecrans, makes a tackle there. Excellent defensive team. And the key defensive uh, tackle is Jimmy Hoffman, I would guess. I'd say Jimmy Hoffman, definitely. He's the guy that puts pressure on the quarterback. He has eight quarterback, six quarterback sacks, and they're an excellent overall defense. Very much like Wittenberg, stability, the key at Ithaca. Jimmy Butterfield has been there 13 years. And Jimmy Butterfield, I think the motivation behind Butterfield and Ithaca is that they've been runners up too many times. They want this one, and they believe they can beat Wittenberg. A quick look at Ithaca College. We'll be back with our national anthem as college football today continues after this. When that sun breaks out, lift up your head and shout, it's gonna be a great day. Kellogg's waits for you, that spirit comes shining through, promising you a great day. K-E-L-L, oh it's double good, starting Kellogg's way. It's not far away, Kellogg's will help you say, it's gonna be a great day. It's lightweight, it's portable, it's virtually indestructible. You can hammer on it, saw on it, sand on it, paint on it, drive a screw on it, cut a pipe on it, plane a door on it, fix a picture on it, or a wheelbarrow, or a chair, or a bicycle. You can even have your lunch on it. The incredible Black & Decker workmate. When America has a job to do, it reaches for Black & Decker. Ladies and gentlemen, with special thoughts for our fellow countrymen who are being held hostage in Iran, we ask you now to listen as Mrs. Pat Holland, a sixth grade teacher from Would Phoenix City Middle School, our sings our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so Broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming on the rocket's red the bombs bursting in This is Pat Holland, a sixth grade teacher here in Phoenix City, Alabama, with our national anthem. 
Be sure to stay tuned now for the stag ball between the Bombers of Ithaca College and the Wittenberg University Tigers. That'll be forthcoming as the Division III National Championship is played on the field here at Phoenix Municipal Stadium in Phoenix City, Alabama. The Division III Championship immediately following over most of these ABC stations. The stare tells us how Santa got his start and Santa Claus is coming to town. Then more plays Cupid to help the new girl in town. And Mindy's mad when the arrow misses the mark. Stop it. Tomorrow, starting at 7, 6 Central and Mountain on ABC. Wendy's presents a great gift idea. Wendy's gift certificates. Ten coupons, only five dollars. To wish your friends a Merry Christmas and a hot and juicy meal. Now, when you buy a $5 Wendy's gift certificate, you'll get a free 1980 Wendy's calendar containing nearly $20 worth of coupons. When winter gets tough and the snow gets deep, fight back with Scout. Scout lets you shift into four-wheel drive for extra traction. And now's the time to buy an International Harvester Scout for next winter. Special factory reductions to your dealer on 79 models make it possible for him to give you a better deal than ever. Next time winter looks like this, fight back with this. Scout, anything less is just a car. Bragg Pools has a free gift for you. Purchase any pool table and receive a free Brunswick custom two-piece queue of $50 value absolutely free. We have a large inventory of pool tables in stock starting at $345. And we have 350 foosball tables in stock for immediate delivery starting at $199. Sprague is also the area headquarters for Golden West and 3-in-1 combo tables. That's a free Brunswick queue with the purchase of any pool table at Sprague Pools now through December 4th. Sprague's the one for family fun. Sprague Pools. U.S. Route 40. Johnny Walker, Monday night at 8. Live from Phoenix City, Alabama, the Amos Alonzo Stag Bowl, Whitberg against Ithaca. And the Tigers of Whitberg coming on the field, dressed in white with a red trim. They are 11-0 for the year. They were in this championship game last year, did not win it. They hope to win this afternoon. They defeated Ithaca, as a matter of fact, in the quarterfinals a year ago. And here come the Ithaca College Bombers. Dressed in blue and white, their head coach is Jimmy Butterfield. They are 10-2 in 1979, hoping to cap the season with a victory in the national championship game this afternoon. Today from Phoenix City Municipal Stadium in Phoenix City, Alabama. ABC Sports presents the Amos Alonzo Stag Bowl. The Bombers of Ithaca College beat the undefeated Tigers of Wittenberg University. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Chevrolet and your participating Chevy dealers who invite you to come take a special test drive during Chevy, Chevy's National Economy Drive. By Kodak, a Kodak gift brings joy all year long. By Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. And by Mr. Goodwrench and the General Motors Parts Division who help you keep that great GM feeling with genuine GM parts. Coin toss going on in the field, and good afternoon once again, everybody. Bern Lundquist along with John Dockery as Wittenberg and Ithaca meet for the national title. John, I would think on paper it looks like a toss-up. It's a toss-up. Two high-powered teams, evenly matched, great records. And you know what I see, Vern, when I look out in the field? They've been subdued and very professional and business-like in their preparation. And here's the emotion that's been under the surface. Both teams look like they're ready. You want to pick a winner? Ithaca in a close game. He put it on the line for you, folks. And that's John Dockery, who will be giving us the analysis this afternoon. Those are the Ithaca Bombers. They're pumped up now, not subdued right now. We'll be back with the opening kickoff right after these messages from Phoenix City, Alabama. Cappy, this Christmas I got the family a great gift at a great price. A Kodak Colorburst instant camera. And Kodak is sending us back $5. <laughs> I also bought them five packs of Kodak Instant Film. And Kodak is sending us back another $5. $10 in all. <laughs> Gee, Kathy, 
There really is a Santa Claus, huh? <laughs> Young man, you should be in bed by now. <laughs> Save up to $10 on all Kodak Colorburst instant cameras and films. See your photo dealer for details. When it's your vacation and you'll fly there for less. That's Transamerica Airlines. That's Transamerica. When you can get more life insurance than you thought you could afford. That's Occidental Life. That's Transamerica. When you rent a car and get the feeling that you're number one. That's Budget Rent-A-Car. There are many companies in the Transamerica family, and they all stand for just one thing. First-rate service at a fair price. That's Transamerica. Hey, how was the monster that ate Tokyo? It made me scared. It made me hungry. Then you're going for a burger? Uh-uh. Have you seen the price of burgers lately? We're going to Kentucky Fried Chicken. At the Colonel's, I know we always get fresh, quality chicken. Now, this is a good meal at a price that makes good sense. Right, son? Right. It's so nice, nice to feel. So good about a meal. So good about Kentucky Fried Chicken. The Wittenberg Tigers won the toss. They have elected to receive. They will be going from south to north here on a gorgeous day. Temperature in the mid 50s. It was a bit chillier than that yesterday and down into the upper 20s last night. But we've got very little wind, a fine, fine day, and Tom Darling will be doing the kicking chores for the Ithaca Bombers. Number 12, there's a look at Meso Moon, number 27, one of the deep men. And he is joined back there by Dana Williams, who wears number 48. The Division Three National Championship about to be decided here this afternoon. Ithaca and Wittenberg in Phoenix City, Alabama. Vern Lundquist along with John Dockery. Good to have you with us. Here comes Tom Darling with the opening kickoff. Meso Moon at the 10. 20. He has some room and is knocked down finally at the 31-yard line by John Bertino, number seven. The offensive backfield for Wittenberg. Chuck Delaney is the quarterback. He's a senior, wears number 12. Skip Buckley will open at fullback, likewise a senior. Tracy King, the 1,000-yard running back. Meso Moon, the man who just returned that opening kickoff. Cliff Davis is the split end, and the tight end is number 88, Dave Frazier. First down and 10. Dave Frazier comes tight to the left side, and Wittenberg will line up in the slot eye formation with the slot man to the right side, and Chuck Delaney says, hold it, we want to check the football. Dan Phillips, number 31, the nose guard. You see him, number 54 is Mark Short, the center. They're gonna change footballs. And yeah, Short didn't like the one they had. Offensive line for Wittenberg will look like this. At center will be number 54, Mark Short. Left tackle, number 71, Jim Ramsey. Wade LaForce is the left guard. And we'll get the rest of them shortly. Here's Delaney, pops once, throws deep, has a man wide open. That's Cliff Davis, and the ball is batted incomplete by Mike Biondi, quarterback and junior from Ithaca. Interesting the way they started off. I mean, you're looking at a great running team in Wittenberg, and they come out, and they Tony, try a pass, first play, Vern. Tony Ramsey is the right guard, wears number 65. Jim Gray is the right tackle, and that'll complete the offensive lineup. Yeah, that's a bit of a surprise, John. I think it tells you something about Wittenberg's respect for Ithaca. Here come the Tigers, second down and 10. You look at Chuck Delaney, the senior from Dayton, Ohio, 5'10", 180 pounds. Meso Moon in motion wide to the left side. Fake to the fullback. The option pitch back to Tracy King. Comes around the corner. He's got 10. He's got 15. He's out of bounds on the first down. At the 47-yard line as Mike Biondi makes the tackle. Defensive lineup for Ithaca as you look at Tracy King, and there's the defense of uh, Ithaca. Rick Jordan at left end, Jimmy Hoffman the left tackle, Don Phillips the nose guard, Pete Giordano is the right tackle, and Phil Bianco is opening at right end. John Laper, the All-American linebacker, joined by Harry Moss, John Bertino, Tom Kleinhammer, Tony Smith, and the man who just made the tackle, Mike Biondi, a former quarterback. It's first down 10 at the 46. That's where the ball has been spotted. Davis, left side. High formation, Meso Moon in motion. Tracy King gets the handoff, and about three yards up near the midfield stripe at the 50-yard line. John Laper, number 47, and Harry Moss, number 33, collaborate on the tackle. Gain of four, it'll be second down and six. Mr. Dockery, it's good to have you with us. It's a pleasure. You see number 27, Meso Moon in motion. Wittenberg told me they're going to do a lot of that today because they want to get some movement on that by that defensive team. They don't just want him sitting there. 
It'll be second down and six. Chuck Delaney, 5'10", 180 pounder. Two wide receivers right side. Delaney wants to throw. Goes across the middle to his tight end. The ball is tipped and is incomplete. It was intended for Dave Frazier, but appeared to be tipped in the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and six. See the graphic on Chuck Delaney. Excuse me, John. Interesting Chuck Delaney has gone to the pass so early. Uh, their passing game basically comes off their running, and that's why I was a little bit surprised to see them gamble so early. Wittenberg is a team that's solid all around, so for them to try and put a touchdown on the board on the first play tells me that they feel they're going to be in a football game this afternoon. It's third down and six at the 50-yard line, opening minutes of the game. No score. Play action once again. The Yanko putting pressure on. Here's a man open, Mason Moon. He's got a first down at the 33-yard line. That's his 14th catch of the year. And we'll look at it once again. You know, Vern, I watched him in practice yesterday, and they practiced this particular play where Meso comes in, in motion, but he was going too deep. Here, he does what he's supposed to do. He gets in between the linebackers and the secondary and makes the catch. Yesterday, he was floating downfield in the area of the secondary. There, they executed perfectly. There's a look at the man who just got the first down. It's first down and 10 at the 34-yard line. No score. Moon in motion. Pitch out Tracy King with Buckley in front. Buckley gets the block. King around the corner for a six-yard game. Tracy King, he's a guy that's a bread and butter runner. And watch the replay, Tracy King takes the pitch, this is a bread and butter play. Meso Moon, 27, comes into your picture, throws a good block on uh, number 46, and that helps Tracy King to get that yardage. So it's second and uh, four or so now. Second down and four, ball at the 27, 28 yard line. Davis to the right side, Meso Moon comes left, and you look at Chuck Delaney, now Moon is in motion. And timeout has been called. Delay of game. It's a five-yard penalty. No timeout. They simply took too long. <clears throat> so they'll mark off five yards, and it'll be a second down and nine. Here's the indication. Delay of game took more than the allotted 25 seconds. You know, Vern, uh, Coach Mauer told me that Chuck Delaney has to have a good day if they're to win. Last week against Widener, he... Truthfully, he had a bad day. What did he say about him yesterday? He's an awful practice player. Exactly. Drives <laughs> him crazy in practice. But when it comes to game time, he does it. Second down and nine. Here's Delaney with the pitch. It's a bad one. King has to go back and squat on the football all the way back at the 40-yard line. It's a loss of seven yards. Tom Kleinhammer came up to make the tackle on Tracy King. There's a look at Delaney. Now the play is brought in by... Number 65, Tony Ramsey. They'll alternate guards. Scott Benson and Tony Ramsey will be bringing the plays in and out. It'll be third down and 16. Moon is to the right side, Davis to the left. Tight end, Dave Frazier is tight right. Moon in motion, straight drop back pass. Has a man open, that's Davis. First down at the 15 yard line, fumble. And now they say he did not have possession of the ball. He did not retain possession of the football. We'll look at it again. Straight drop back pass. Now remember, he's only five feet 10. Here he moves around in the pocket a little bit, delivers the ball on the money to Cliff Davis. And Davis takes a hit right. Ooh, that hurt and coughs up the ball for an incompletion. Cliff Davis is his money receiver. He's averaging 25 yards a catch, and he has 25 catches coming into today's game. That's an oddity to see Cliff Davis drop a ball. Dave Miller is on the punt. He kicks it deep. Jim Duncan is back there, and it's a rather poor kick, but it is inside the 20 and out of bounds at the 18-yard line. So the Wittenberg drive stalls, and Ithaca has the ball for the first time. We are in Phoenix City, Alabama. We have 11 minutes and 36 seconds remaining in a scoreless first quarter. We'll be back right after this. Mr. Goodrich, what? there is a clunking noise in the back, and no one has been able to find it. Well, I'll take a look. Oh, good. Mr. Goodwrench really understands your General Motors car, and dealer service bulletins from GM help him spot problems fast. Find it? Sure did. Found it right here in this new GM service bulletin. Keep Just that lighter. great GM feeling. Mr. Goodwrench. And genuine GM points. He's at over 6,000 participating GM dealers. 
Chevy's national economy drive is on. Chevy's got the drive. Chevy's got it. Featuring Chevy values and mileage in full-size half-ton pickups and vans with standard transmissions, nobody tops Chevy. Plus, Chevy El Camino with an estimated 20 miles per gallon, no other six-cylinder truck tops it. Chevy's got the drive. Come and get it. Get Chevy's free booklet on fuel-saving tips and come take a special test drive that lets you see how good driving skills can improve your gas mileage. It's Chevy's national economy drive. Oh, oh, oh. Next, one of the fiercest, oldest, and most colorful college rivalries, a classic clash, the Army-Navy game on ABC. Wittenberg and Ithaca, first quarter, and Ithaca's got the ball for the first time. The quarterback is Doug Benchko. He's a senior. Army-Navy game coming up at the conclusion of our game, one of the oldest rivalries in college football, and you'll see that next, of course. First down 10, split backs behind Benchko, John Niccolo and Bob Ferrigno, 22 and 30. The handoff to Ferrigno, and he plunges across right guard out near the 22-yard line. Dale Bradford, number 45, made the tackle. Here's the quarterback, Doug Benchko. John Niccolo, only 5'8", 170-pounder, but a great athlete. Bob Ferrigno is a fullback. Gary Jarvie, a flanker. Jim Duncan at wide receiver. And Jim Meyer at wide receiver. We expect to see Ithaca go with the three wide receiver offense most of the day, and they're doing that right now. Two to the left side, and Duncan is split wide right. Wide splits in the offensive line. Ferrigno again, room to run. He's got a first down plus, and is finally tackled by John Saxon at the 34-yard line. Bill George, an all-conference center for the second year. Number 53, Kirk Jonah is the left tackle. Chris Hardy, the left guard, wears number 68. Tim Downs is the right guard, wearing number 64. Alan McDonald, the right tackle, he wears number 73. First and 10, Ithaca at their own 34-yard line. Two wide receivers right side. Benchko pumps once, now pops it across the middle. It's dropped at the 50-yard line, intended for Jim Duncan. The defensive play made by number 18, Roger Brown. Defensive line, Jeff Manchester, Joe Govern, Sam Baker, the nose guard, Tim Crow, and Mike Dowds. The linebackers, Dwight Porter and Dale Bradford. And the defensive secondary, Bill Beach, Roger Brown, John Saxton, and Dave Burchard. It's second down and 10. Two wide receivers right side, one split left. Split backs again. Handoff goes to Ferrigno. He cracks it open. He's got a first down at the 45-yard line. Roger Brown makes the tackle. This program is being brought to you as an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports. Now let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. WKEF-TV Dayton 22. Jim Butterfield, 13th year as a head coach at Ithaca College, 80, 40, and 1. His mom and dad live in my hometown of Dallas, and they're here for the game, and I had a chance to meet them last night. First down and 10. At the 45 and a half yard line. Benchko with a handoff to Ferrigno, and he has cracked down at the line of scrimmage. Sam Baker, number 53, was a part of it. Number 76 is Mike Dowd, 73 is Joe Govern. Here comes Baker now, coming to the near side. He's a 5'11", 200 pound senior from Bucyrus, Ohio. He is out and Chris Fields comes in. They go in what they call a 40 split defense, right John? Looking for the pass here. This is their uh, adjustment to the passing game of Ithaca's. An extra defensive back, nose guard out, play with four linemen. Five defensive backs in. And Benchko takes too much time. That'll be the second delay of game call here in the first quarter, which has 9.20 remaining. The thing that uh, Wittenberg was worried most about, you look at Ithaca and they have developed this year consciously a strong balanced attack and they have an excellent passing attack the place where Wittenberg is suspect is in their defensive secondary so you have a strength against a possible weakness and that was worrying coach Dave Maurer let's see what happens now as that strength goes against the weakness on second down and 15 two wide receivers right side bench go on the roll has plenty of time and he can keep it he's at the 45 and is jolted down up at the 48 yard line Tackle is made by Bill Beach, number 28. Coming up Monday night, live 9 o'clock Eastern time, the Oakland Raiders, well, we'll look at it again. This is a run-pass option here, and uh, Doug Benchko decides to take it. He's an excellent runner with great speed in the open field. Here, Beach puts it to him. 
You love to get a hold of a quarterback when you have him in the open field of the defensive back, Vern. You love it. He's got a gleam in his eye, folks, I can tell you. John Dockery, a quarterback on the Super Bowl champion New York Jets. Bench go, flips it out for Niccolo, and he is hit and popped at the 50-yard line by Bill Beach, a sophomore from Johnstown, Ohio. It'll be a punting situation. Coming up Monday night, live, 9 o'clock Eastern time, critical game for both teams, the New Orleans Saints and the Oakland Raiders. Oakland still with playoff aspirations. And New Orleans, of course, tied with the Rams for the NFC Western Division lead. That's live, 9 o'clock Eastern time over most of these ABC stations. Dave Whalen is on the punt, and Chris Fields will return it. There's a look at Whalen and a look at number 10, Chris Fields, who had a 39-yard punt return last week to set up the victory. Nice high kick by Whalen. What a beauty. Fields calls for the fair catch, lets it bounce, and it is stopped at oh. the one-yard line. Nice down oh. play. Vern, that's a great play. That's what you told. Bob Campeach made the stop, a 49-yard punt. Wittenberg's got the ball, but they've got it 99 yards away. The Ithaca bench doing some celebrating. We've got seven minutes and 45 seconds remaining in a scoreless first quarter. We're not just a couple of animals who can only play football. We can be civilized, too. Tennis is sophisticated, but you still got to be fast on your feet. So we still drink light beer from Miller. It's got a third less calories than the regular beer, and it's less filling. And it really tastes great. Now that we've played singles, we're looking for a nice, friendly game of doubles. Tennis, anyone? Mm -hmm. Like beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Fidelity Electronics introduces the first chess game that not only thinks, but also speaks to you. I am Fidelity Chess Challenger. Your computer opponent. Enter your move. B one C three. Enter. From H four to F two. Queen takes on set and mate. Fidelity's Challenger series games at fine stores everywhere. High school activities attract millions of participants each year. The National Federation of State High School Associations requests your support for this valuable part of high school education. School activities are the other half of education. Take a look at the downfield coverage on the punt. John Dockery? And this is a point that coaches make all the time. Watch Bob Campese here tap the ball as he's going into the end zone. If he had grabbed that, Vern, it would have gone into the end zone and been a touchback. Instead, it's on the one-foot line. Great field position for it from Ithaca's point of view. Terrible for Wittenberg. It was Tony Fusero who actually stopped the ball, but Campese made it possible. Now, here's the quarterback keeper, Chuck Delaney. Gets about two or three out near the four-yard line. John Laper, number 47, and Harry Moss, number 33, make the tackle. Now your options are somewhat limited when you're on your own one foot line. Very limited. But they have an excellent rushing game so that, uh, you know, they should have, have some success down here. You see number 63, Scott Benson, bringing in the play, and Tony Ramsey comes to the bench. Dave Maurer will chat with him and send the next one in. Here's Chuck Delaney, the quarterback. He still got it. He will keep. He's down at the six-yard line. Tackle is made by Tony Smith, a senior from Poughkeepsie, New York, number 46. It'll be third, and still a need of about four yards for the first down. There's a look at Tony Smith. Four interceptions for the year. Probably a wise choice, Vern, on that play. Too much ball handling and pitching down the end zone. So early in the game, the score is zip-zip. You don't want to give the other team a touchdown right here. Ball is at the seven-yard line. It's third down and four. Wittenberg, we've got no score with 6.38 to go first quarter. Delaney still has it. He is caught short of the first down near the 10. Bill Rosecrans, number 58, made the tackle. There's Dave Maurer. Came to Wittenberg in 1955 under Bill Edwards and has been there ever since. 25 years. The last 10 is the head coach. What a record he's got. Gee, many Christmas. Fourth down. And Dave Miller is on to kick. He's been having a rather poor year. His first kick was 22 yards. See what he can do now from the end zone. Jim Duncan is the deep man. Here's the kick. Not a very good one. Bounces. Gets a Wittenberg roll, but tremendous field position now for Ithaca at the 42-yard line.
So the Bombers have the ball, and coming up after our ball game this afternoon, the Army-Navy game, first played in 1890. This is the 80th time those two teams have met. Army's won 37 games, Navy 36. There have been six ties. Navy a favorite today. They'll be battling to even up the score, and that's next after our game. First and 10, split backs again. Bench go, will throw. Looks for Duncan, fires it out. No interference call made. There was contact, I think, John. Roger Brown was the defensive back of the play. You know, it's one of those situations, Vern, where the defensive back has such great position that he just couldn't get through the receiver. Um, Roger Brown was in perfect position for that out pattern. Those young ladies made the trip down from Ithaca, New York. I heard on the radio last night that it was snowing in Syracuse. It's gorgeous here, folks, those of you who are watching back here in that part of the country. First and 10. Benchko still has. Now pitches back. It's a bad pitch. And a scramble for the football. Wittenberg has it. Joe Govern made the recovery, number 73. Some of the folks are down here from Springfield, Ohio. There's the senior from Macedonia. We'll look at it again. Here's Benchko. He rides his uh, Nicolo into the line. Here he has a decision to make. He maybe made the wrong decision. Might have turned it up there and gotten some yardage. It's easy to second guess from up here. Perigno just couldn't get to the ball. Wittenberg recovers. A big break for Wittenberg. First down, 10. And all of a sudden, they've got new life at their own 49. The pitch back goes to Tracy King. He is in jail and caught and dropped back at the 48-yard line by Tom Kleinhammer, a senior from Webster, New York, number 21. And Kleinhammer has had his problems. They were worried that he might not be able to play today. Last week, he went in to try and block an extra point and got injured in three places, his knee, his extended elbow and back spasms on one place. So they were worried about number 21 today. It's really good he's out there because uh, it's a real drop off after he leaves. 5.08 to go, first quarter, no score. And a second down, 11 now for Wittenberg. That's Meso Moon in motion. Delaney wants to throw under heavy pressure, flips it out. It's caught by Tracy King, but he loses three yards back to the 47 as Harry Moss, the senior, had him covered like a blanket. Good penetration that time by the defensive line as well, John. Good pressure in. Two good mobile linebackers for Ithaca. Morris and, of course, we've talked about Laper number 47. But what, what strikes me early, Vern, is that these teams mean business. They're out here to play. They're coming after one another. And that's the kind of competition you'd expect in a championship game. There's number 47, Laper. Third down and 12. See what Delaney has in mind. He's got a power eye set in the backfield. Meso Moon. Delaney on the roll. Finally fires deep, has a man open. It's Davis for the first down at the 33. That's a young man who has a 25 yards per catch average for the year. 25 catches for 627. And watch this play as John Dockery recaps it. Here's the mobility of John Laper. Now he comes underneath. I thought he was going to intercept the ball. He goes up for it and just misses it. The concentration on Davis is the thing that's impressive there. He had a man going right in front of his vision. Still was able to concentrate and catch that ball. Slot eye formation, now Meso Moon in motion, wide to the left side. And off goes to King, the eye back, and he is caught and dropped after a pickup of a couple by John Laper, number 47, and Jimmy Hoffman, number 66. 31 is Don Phillips, the nose guard, last man up. Jimmy Hoffman, number 56. Laper, the fellow you see now on the right side of your screen, 6'2", 218, is not a weightlifter, and his coach, Jimmy Butterfield, says if he'd get on the weights, he might go into the pros and play a long time. If he's interested in playing pro ball, he'll probably have to do that. He has a speed and mobility to do it. I think he has to develop a desire to do whatever it takes. Second down, Delaney has a man open his oh. tight end, and oh, what a hit on Dave Frazier by John Bertino, number seven. He really popped him up around the helmet. <laughs> I'll tell you. That's a defensive back loves to get a situation like that where the receiver is extended for the ball and concentrating on the ball and you're coming up and you just let him know you're there because next time he may take a look at you and lose his concentration. I suppose for defensive guys, it is a game of intimidation, isn't it, John? Somewhat. You have to get the attention of the offensive receiver every once in a while. <laughs> Third down at eight. Ball at the 32. Delaney converted the third and 12 a moment ago. This one is batted down by number 63, Carl Guidotti. Or Rick Jordan, number 83. Let's see. We'll check and see which one got it. 
Here's a problem that a quarterback that isn't very tall might have, getting the ball up over a defensive lineman here. See? The defensive line is all over him there. But he has a little bit of a sidearm motion, not over the top. And that takes away from his ability to get the ball over a big defensive lineman. And Giadotti, you know, put on the good rush and knocked that ball down. Best pass defense you can have, Vern. It'll be fourth down, and Wittenberg is going to go for it. Delaney, run pass option. This is strictly run. He's at the 25, and I don't know. It's going to be very close for the first down. Tom Kleinhammer knocked him out of bounds. If indeed he did not get the first down, it's almost as good as a punt. He is short, I believe. Let's see. They're going to bring the chain across. Well, no, I don't know. It's very, very close. We'll look at it again while they bring the chain from the far side of the field. You know what I like about Delaney? When the chips are down, he calls his own number. To me, he had run in his head all the way here. It was just a rollout. Blockers all leading him, and he was going for that first down himself. It's going to be really tight. But I think Delaney said, okay, I'm going to win or lose this game on what I do today. And he called his own number, and we're going to know in a moment whether he got it or not. There's the stretch. How about that? How about that? By inches. Were you surprised like I was if they went for it? Not, not that much. Both teams have had trouble with their kicking games. If there is a weakness in the kicking in on either team, it's in the kicking game. That would have been a long field goal. I like that decision. So they go for it on fourth and nine and get it by a foot. High formation, two wide receivers right side. Option pitch back to Tracy King at the 20, cut down at the 19 by John Laper, number 47. I don't mean to disparage Canisius College, but I read an article on Laper, and he said he was recruited by only two schools. I know that. Ithaca and Canisius. He said, why did you go to Ithaca? He says, have you seen Canisius? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm sure a lot of schools wish they had him now. He's developed into a super fine linebacker, one of the best in the East, I'd say. He's been a four-year starter. There's a look at Chuck Delaney. It's second down and a long five. No score in the game. We've got 2.28 to go. Delaney wants to throw. Now he'll keep. And he pays the price for it. He didn't gain much. It'll be third down and four. Harry Moss made the tackle number 33, a senior from Fayetteville, New York. Kind of the unheralded linebacker because he's playing alongside Laper. 5'11", 210-pound senior. Also on the varsity lacrosse team as a member of these uh, Ithaca players are. Well, that's one of the advantages of playing in Division Three, Vern. You can play another sport if you want to play baseball in the spring, super or lacrosse. Whereas if you're playing at a big school, football, football, football. Third down and five. Delaney looks straight ahead. Play action. Looks deep for Davis. Davis is in the end zone. Tipped away by Mike Biondi, but there's a flag now. Came up over the top, Mike Biondi, a former quarterback, who leads the club in interceptions with five, and it's going to be pass interference for look again. Play action, play action, which is their passing game. Ball is well delivered. Biondi comes over the top. Oh, Vern, you know, I'm a former defensive back. If a defensive back makes that kind of a play, I want to see him make it. I don't want to see it given to the offensive player. Hard to tell whether it was or not. Well, they call the interference play. Power eye set now. No score with 1.40 to go. Mesa Moon in motion. Wide right. The handoff goes to Tracy King. He's got six. Touchdown. Bread and butter, man. Who do you give it to when you get down there? You give it to your big back, Tracy King. He's had nine TDs going into the, today's game. That's number 10 for him. Kind of a nice situation for Tracy King. Here he is again. He's big and strong. See him launch himself. That's the kind of a back that you want to carry the ball when you get near that goal line. Last few years, you know, he played behind Davey Merritt, as we mentioned, and really didn't get that much opportunity to play, even though he does have 2,000 career yards. Here's Mike. Mike Dowds with the extra point. And it's up and good. 11 plays in the drive, 51 yards following the fumble recovery. So Wittenberg at one point backed up on its own one foot line, recovers the fumble, goes in to score. They've got a seven point lead, 137 to go first quarter. Like it or not, winter is here. And right now, to help you get through the messy weather ahead, Goodyear is making a special limited time offer on Tiempo, the original all season radio. Now through December 5th, Tiempo prices start at only $37.95 for P155 ADR 13 Blackwall, plus a $1.59 FET, no trade needed. 
We have sizes to fit popular import, compact, standard, or luxury cars. Get Tiempo, starting at $37.95, only from Goodyear. They're everywhere. Today's physical Americans. If you're one of them, there's a new cologne made just for you. Racket Club. It gives a man the physical advantage. It's like that terrific feeling when you know you're going to win it. Racket Club, the new cologne for men. It's crisp, stylish, exhilarating. Racket Club, wear it. Wendy says it's my most effective weapon. New Racket Club cologne by English Leather. The physical advantage. America's Eric Hyden speed skating for five gold medals. Can he meet the challenge? The 1980 Winter Olympics exclusively on ABC. Scoreboard tells a story thus far. 7-0 game, 97 seconds to go first quarter. 51 yards, 11 plays. They took four minutes and three seconds off the clock. And Tracy King got the first touchdown of the afternoon on a one-yard run. Mike Dowds, who kicked the extra point, will kick off. There's Terry Jarvie, one of the deep men for Ithaca. And he is joined back there by Jim Duncan, left side of the screen. Mike Dowds with the approach. Jarvie has it at the five. Nice catch. 15, 20. And cut down up at the 24-yard line. First down and 10. Tackle made by Scott Gray, number 51. I have a feeling, John Dockery, that we're going to see some scores today. <laughs> I think that might be the case. Penn it? State with an early lead over Pittsburgh. Excuse me, 7-0 first quarter. Because Ithaca does have the ability to throw the ball. Here they come with their three wide receivers again. All good receivers, by the way. Those other two scores you saw are Division II semifinals. They play for the national championship a week from today in Albuquerque, New Mexico. First down and 10. And off left side goes to Ferrigno, and Dale Bradford meets him and drops him. They have not used John Niccolo that much thus far. Which surprises me. Niccolo is one of those scrappy quick backs that can break a big play for you. Ferrigno, though, I think is their bread and butter man. He's had a fantastic year. Well, indeed, 824 yards for the season. And Niccolo, 843. That's the kind of productivity you like out of those run running backs. It'll be second down and eight. Bench go the quarterback. Back split behind him. Two wide receivers right side. Here's the handoff to John Niccolo, and he's out to the 30-yard line. Joe Govern made the tackle, number 73. And Dwight Porter, number 55, came up to help. Young man is 5'8", 170-pounder, a starting shortstop on the baseball team where he hit, what, 333 last year. You know, and he tells me also that he wouldn't mind playing some professional baseball if he gets a chance. Either that or he'd like to go into coaching. He's a really fine oh. athlete. Every, saw, time, every time he touches the ball, he averages over five yards of carry, and Ferrigno over six yards of carry. So gives him. Uh, Here's Niccolo, first down, up at the 38-yard line on the draw play. The tackle made by Dwight Porter, the sophomore from Cincinnati. And Dale Bradford, number 45, will look again. It's kind of a sprint draw, a little bit of a counter draw. Get the defense flowing and then come back against the green and make that good yardage. First down and 10. Bill George, the center, over the ball. Three wide receiver offense once again. Bench go, being pressured, flips it out, caught by Jim Meyer. And he's got the ball at the 45-yard line. Doug Benchko is one of those big quarterbacks that can do this kind of thing, throw that quick out. Here the ball is delivered fairly well on the money. Meyer makes the catch. Meyer's a junior, he's 5'10", and he's had 13 catches this year. That's the end of the first quarter of play. We've got another 15 coming up in just a second. The Tiger from Wittenberg, happy right now because his ball club leads it seven to nothing. This boy is known as Little Mess because mishaps seem to follow him everywhere. So rather than drag out her heavy vacuum cleaner, his mother got the new cordless dust buster from Black & Decker. It's light, powerful, recharges continuously, and perfect for small, fast cleanups on stairs, floors, anywhere. So if you've got a little mess around your house, get yourself a Black & Decker dust buster. And remember, it makes a perfect gift at Christmas time, too. Close. Real whiskers from 9 millimeters up. Ahead, the horizon, the skin line, and a razor that shaves below that line. The Sunbeam Groomer Razor. 
No other razor is quite like it. Under history's thinnest shaving head, self-honing stainless blades attack whiskers a thousand times faster than your eyes now see. With precision and comfort, the Sunbeam Groomer Razor can give you a shave as close as you can get. Bruce Jenner for the Minolta XG1. The Minolta XG1 35mm is so automatic, I can keep taking pictures while my friend Jeff kicks the ball from sunlight to shadow. The XG1 changes the exposure not just automatically, but continuously. Minolta's continuous automatic exposure system helps give you pictures you never thought you could take at a price you never thought you could afford. The Minolta XG1, the automatic choice in automatic cameras. Bert Lundquist and John Dockery back in Phoenix City, Alabama. The Division III National Championship game, 7-0. Wittenberg leads a one-yard run by Tracy King. Wittenberg cheerleaders down from Springfield, Ohio. It's second down and two. Ithaca's got the ball at their own 46-yard line. Bench go. Drops back to throw. Pops it out to a safety valve for Rigno, and it's incomplete. Tim Crow had the penetration that forced the uh, incomplete pass, number 78, senior from Cincinnati, Ohio. He's a small defensive tackle, six foot 205, but very active in that defensive line. One of the more active guys. He's an all-conference tackle for them. Was out most of last year with a knee injury, but has played healthy all of this year. Third down and two, Ithaca at the 46-yard line. Hand off right side for Rigno. Looks like he's got the first and 10. Sam Baker, number 53, the nose guard, and Joe Govern, the left tackle, make the tackle on that youngster. Bob for Rigno from Huntington, New York. He's just a junior, another of the lacrosse players. Know what his hobby is? He considers himself an expert in Japanese landscaping. Japanese landscaping. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> first down and 10. Ball at the 49, bench go, fakes the draw, goes back, nice overhand delivery, but the pass is high, and good coverage uh, in the secondary by Roger Brown. Doug Benchko did look good on that play. First quarter stats, take a look at them, John. Five first downs to two, rushing yards are even, the only edge in the passing department, one turnover, time of possession, very definitely in Wittenberg's favor. Penalties don't show on that stat either, Vernon. You know that interference penalty on the goal line is the one that's hurt so far in terms of uh, Ithaca. Second down and 10. Here's the draw play to Niccolo. Niccolo breaks one tackle, but then runs into Dwight Porter and is knocked down at the 45-yard line. <laughs> Elsewhere in the country, Penn State now leading Pittsburgh seven to three in the first quarter, and we'll, we've got a third down and five at the 44 and a half yard line. Long count by Benchko, two-step drop, pumps once across the middle, caught by Jim Duncan, first down at the 35 yard line. Dale Bradford makes the tackle, but not before Duncan picks up the first and 10. Watch Doug, watch Doug here. See him look away and then come back. Waits till that second lane clears for Duncan. Duncan was covered on the first pump, but he waited long enough till he got into the hole in the second passing lane and delivered the ball on the money for the first down. Leading receiver for Ithaca on the season, 24 catches. It's first down and 10 at the 35-yard line. 7-0, 13-25 to go in the first half. Hand off to Ferrigno. Bangs down to the 30-yard line and picks up a quick five. Tackle made by Scott Gray, who's in a nose guard now, number 51. You know what Ferrigno does well, Vern? He, that first step, when he hits the line of scrimmage and gets the ball, he makes that quick cut at the line to get himself free and to set up that block. Very, very exceptional for running back. Second down and five. Three wide receiver offense again. This is John Niccolo, ankle tackle, but he's close for the first and 10 at the 25. You know, Vern, something very interesting. You see, you, you'll see Doug Benchko take his time at the line of scrimmage. There's a reason for that. But here we see the replay. It's just a straight dive. Offensive line is doing a pretty good job there. Here, Nicolo makes a, a run, a lot of yardage on his own, but good, good offensive blocking. For the day, 23 yards on four carries. It's third down, less than a foot. 7-0 game, but Ithaca driving, trying to tie it up. 
Quarterback keeper, he's got the first and 10. Sam Baker, the nose guard, makes the tackle. Great size for a quarterback, 6'3", 200. Interesting, too, there's a real contrast here. Doug Benchko will take that much time at the line of scrimmage for a reason. He's calling 95% of his plays at the line of scrimmage. He's looking at that defense and adjusting and making his call depending upon what they do. I want to talk more about that because it's really an interesting concept. Here's the pass play. Pressure is put on. Benchko goes deep. Great catch. Jim Duncan at the 14-yard line. What concentration he showed. He has receivers. I mean, he has Javi Myers and, Dun and Duncan. Jim Duncan, just a sophomore, and is a game breaker. So watch Bench go. Little fake, delivers the ball. But the real thing here is the concentration on Duncan. The defensive back all over him. A little bit of a bobble still pulls it in. Second down and less than a yard at the 14-yard line. Niccolo, first down and 10, down to the 11. Tim Crow makes the tackle. Number 78, number 37, also a part of it. Jim Cobell, junior linebacker, who has replaced Dwight Porter. There's John Niccolo. Number 68 is Chris Hardy, his left guard. The Alabama National Guard says howdy. Well, we're glad to be here. First down and 10 at the 12-yard line. Two steps, left side, Myers open, touchdown! Jim Meyer makes the grab, six points. There's Jim Meyer, touchdown. The thing that makes this work, watch Bench go, look the other way, come back, zing, deliver the ball. If you're a defensive back covering Meyer and you're reading the, deep, the receiver as well as the quarterback, you see him look away, you don't react as quickly. So that made the play as much as uh, anything else, him looking away and coming back. Tom Donning will try and tie it up now. The snap a little high, the hold is down, the kick is up, and it is good. Ten minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the second quarter of play, and we are tied in Phoenix City, Alabama, 7-7. Chevy's national economy drive is on. Chevy's got the drive. Chevy's got it. Chevy's National Economy Drive features great values like Chevy Monte Carlo with standard V6 power, great mileage, and a finely tuned sports suspension. Chevy's got the drive. Come and get it. Get Chevy's free booklet on fuel-saving tips and come take a special test drive that lets you see how good driving skills can improve your gas mileage to help you go farther on less. It's Chevy's National Economy Drive. Uh -huh. Hey, you want to meet a guy who's really in deep water? He's on top of what's going to be the largest Texaco offshore rig ever. It's off the coast of Scotland, and it costs around a half a billion dollars. When it's fully operational, it'll be able to deliver almost four million gallons of oil a day. Will that help America? It sure will. Because in the North Sea or here at home, finding oil anywhere reduces dependence everywhere. Texaco, we're working to keep your trust. Next, one of the fiercest, oldest, and most colorful college rivalries, a classic clash, the Army-Navy game on ABC. We are back, and let's look at the touchdown play once again. John Dockery. Doug Benchko is picking on a defensive back there who is one-on-one. -on -one. That wide formation causes one-on-one -on -one coverage. He's playing too far off and too far inside, and there's a touchdown to Jim Meyer. 12-yard TD to tie the score. Now Tom Darling will kick off. The deep men are Meso Moon and Dana Williams. There's a look at Meso Moon. Relatively short kick. It'll be Williams at the 18. Williams 25. Williams at the 30. Gets a block for Moon. Now he's knocked down. There's a fumble and a scramble for it. And Wittenberg recovers. John Bertino made the hit. Number seven. Coming up. Next Saturday on Wide World of Sports, as we look at the 76-yard drive, 15 plays, 5 minutes and 40 seconds, Bench go to Meyer to tie it up. And we'll talk about Wide World in just a second. Dave Frazier, number 88, the tight end. First down 10, Wittenberg has the ball at their own 37-yard line. I 
formation in the backfield. Reverse to Maceo Moon is faked. Now Delaney goes deep for Davis, incomplete at the 38-yard line. John Bertino with the coverage. Jimmy Hoffman had pressure on Delaney. He intended for Cliff Davis. Coming up next Saturday on Wide World of Sports, 5 o'clock Eastern Time, World Cup Boxing Championships. Featuring squads from the Soviet Union and the U.S., the first time ever for that competition. And from Fort Worth, Texas, the first time the World Gymnastics Championships have ever been held in the United States. It gets underway tomorrow, and you'll see highlights a week from today on Wide World of Sports as it returns after a hiatus of a couple of months for football. Here's Delaney pitching it out wide right. Gracie King, 45, 50, down the sidelines and out of bounds at the 45-yard line. <laughs> Tony Smith knocked him out of bounds. Tracy King showed you some of his stuff here. Good fake. Delaney pitches. The pitch was excellent because King was a little bit out in front and got the ball almost around the end. And here, watch this. Watch 47. Bang. <laughs> Let's him know that he's around. <laughs> well, I, I wish you folks could see the gleam in John Dockery's eyes every time one of those defensive backs makes a hit. <laughs> First and 10. Delaney has it. Quarterback keeper. A couple of yards down to the 43. Tackle made by Harry Moss, number 33. 7-7 game, 10-18 to go. Vern, are you suggesting that I may be partial to defensive uh, football players out on that field? I'm emphatically <laughs> suggesting that, yes, as a matter of fact. John, of course, played his college ball at Harvard. Five years with the Jets, two with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and then a year that he wants to forget. <laughs> the World Football League, yes. <laughs> Second down and eight. Pitch out, right side, King. Good force by the defensive secondary. Oh, what a play by Tony Smith. Now, you don't have to show any prejudice when you talk about this play. It was a fine, fine play. Watch John Laper. He always gets good flow, plays off a blocker, gets up after he's knocked down, and always gets in the action. He'll be around the action. I mean, you may take him down, but he'll be back up on you, John Laper. North Tonawanda, New York, just outside of Buffalo. Third down and 12. I set. Mesa Moon in motion. Delaney is picked off by Mesa Moon. How do you like them apples? Is that planned? Is that a play designed to work that way? Oh. Bill Bianco tipped it. Look at it again. Watch this again. Meso Moon is just hanging around. The ball is thrown. Bianco tips it, makes a great play to tip it, and Meso, right place at the right time. Bianco then made the tackle, but it's first down 10. Those are the season stats for Meso Moon. Delaney now is three out of nine for 35 yards. He'll pitch it. Tracy King, hit and drop by Tony Smith again. Another nice play by the senior from Poughkeepsie. And Phil Bianco was also there. There's Smith. He's got four interceptions for the year. This Ithaca team has picked off 32 passes. And they almost had one a moment ago. First down, or second down, rather, and 10. 7-7 seven, seven game, 8-20 to go in the first half of play. Meso Moon goes wide to the left side. Cliff Davis wide right on second and 10 at the 34. Delaney. Moon, incomplete. Good downfield coverage again by Tony Smith, number 46. Good fake by Delaney. He almost, he almost caught them napping in the secondary on that play. Look at, look at the offensive. Uh, off Wittenberg coming into today's game has been an offensive machine. But they, their total offense average is 435 yards a game. So it's. It's not an oddity, and it's not unsuspected that they would be able to move the ball to a certain degree against Ithaca. Third down and 10 now at the 34-yard line. Delaney looks over the defensive alignment. Option play. No, oh, nice recovered fumble. Ithaca's got the ball at the 45. Mark Seaman, number 48. Sophomore from Johnson City, New York. And timeout has been called after the fumble recovery from Mark Seaman. Second turnover of the game. We've got 7.57 remaining in the first half of play. Score is tied 7-7. 
Pizza Hut Supreme, a special pizza with five, count them, five toppings. Supremely good. We're coming in to Pizza Hut. We're coming in for good. Oh boy, Skydiver! Pull shoot! Oh, I went too much to the right. Maybe one of these days they'll let me play. They never seem to get tired of playing Atari. <laughs> Probably because Atari has so many different games to play. Games like basketball, football, chess, bowling, outlaw. More than 30 games. <laughs> but I never get to play. Thanks. No other company offers you as many different video game cartridges as Atari. Football excitement like you're viewing today can be seen at 107 Division II and 196 Division III NCAA colleges. The 1979 Division II season climaxes December 8th with a championship game to be covered by ABC. Jim Butterfield, head coach, Ithaca, 13th year, graduate of the University of Maine where he was an all Eastern Conference guard. And there's Dave Maurer. Head coach of Wittenberg, graduate of Denison University, was recruited to Vanderbilt. Said he went down there to look the school over, and there was a guy throwing bullets named Billy Wade. He decided that that's not where he wanted to play football. Might be a smart decision. Yeah. <laughs> so he went to Denison. First down and 10. After the fumble recovery by Mark Seaman, Benchko drops back, flips it out, incomplete. John, talk a little bit more, if you will, about uh, this whole philosophy, the concept of calling the offensive plays at the line of scrimmage. It, you know, it, Coach, it must take a pretty doggone intelligent quarterback. Huh? Exactly right. Jim Butterfield has entrusted the entire offense to Doug Benchko. He'll come up to that line of scrimmage. He'll say in the huddle, uh, check with me on the line of scrimmage. He'll come up, look over the defense, mostly to free safety, and call that play on the line. Uh, you saw him doing that right then. Now the long count. And here's the play. Pitch out. Goes to Niccolo. Niccolo breaks the tackle, gets across the 45 to the 47 yard line. Tackle is made by Bill Beach, number 28. Vern Benchko is not sure. He has to have intelligence and he has to have the ability to read and call the correct play, but his offensive line has to have their helmets uh, on right and their heads on right also because they'll have to react and call the blocking assignments and schemes and variations also. So he puts a lot on his offensive teams. It'll be third down and seven right now. 7-7 seven, seven ball game. And Benchko wants a bunch. Goes across the middle. The ball is incomplete at the 45-yard line. Intended for Terry Jarvey. And the defensive play made by Chris Fields, number 10. Junior, 5'8", 165-pounder. So Dave Whalen comes on to punt. It's Ithaca. You look at it again. The ball is delivered very well. Jarvey had a chance that Fields comes on. Fields is that extra defensive back they put in there in passing situations. Made a good play, but that ball was catchable. He is back in punt return situation now at the 15-yard line. Dave Miller is, or rather, uh, Dave Whalen is on the kick. Fields has had his problems, Vern. He is, last year he was excellent, sure-fingered back there, caught everything. This year he's been having a little trouble fielding punts. Fair catch is called, and the catch is made by Roger Brown, number 18, at the 24-yard line. First half of a doubleheader for you this afternoon. We've got the Division Three game here, of course, the national championship on the line. And then coming up at the conclusion of our game, that traditional encounter between Army and Navy. Navy having a, a very good year. Army under Lou Saban struggling a little bit this season. They're playing in Philadelphia, and that'll be next over most of these ABC stations. Keith Jackson and Arapar Sejan will be at that ball game. First down and 10. Here's the handoff to the fullback, Skip Buckley, and Buckley cracks across the 25. Harry Moss makes the tackle. Contrasting styles in quarterbacks here. Chuck Delaney, obviously a different physical specimen than uh, Benchko, much smaller. And also the philosophy. Dave Maurer, the coach, decides that he wants to have control of the game, so he sends in every play to his quarterback, Chuck Delaney. It'll be second down and seven. The 7-7 seven -seven game. Handoff goes to Meso Moon, the wingback. He's out to the 29-yard line. That's about it. As Don Phillips, the nose guard, makes the tackle. Vern, I know you're down in Dallas. Do you think a quarterback should have control of the game and call his own plays? I know Landry doesn't call a lot of the plays for Starback. What's your feeling on that? I think the quarterback should call his own plays, yes. Not that I would argue with the success that Tom Landry's had. 
I know that Roger Staubach feels the quarterback ought to call his own plays. That's been the one thing that has chafed him during his career in Dallas. He's kind of grown accustomed to it, I guess. But Here's Delaney back to throw. And if the catch is made by Tracy King, but he is short of the first. What do you think, John? I'm, I'm of the same feeling. I think an athlete on the field has, a, has his fingers on the pulse and can feel the rhythm of a game. And uh, that's input that a coach doesn't have. He's not out there. So I think if you have an intelligent quarterback and you school him well, you should give him the opportunity to react to the situation that's happening on the field. I couldn't imagine Weeb Eubank calling the plays for Joe Namath. No, that is, <laughs> that is kind of hard to envision. They'll bring the chain out to see if they got the first down. Tony Ramsey is waiting there near the number 65, along with John Lapher, number 47. Here's a stretch of the chain. Did he or didn't he? He didn't. It'll be fourth down, and the punting unit will come on. Dave Miller is on to punt, and Jim Duncan goes deep. It's 5.45 to go in the first half. Good halftime show coming up. We've got 12 or 13 high school bands from this area that will be performing at halftime. Gorgeous setting here in Phoenix City, Alabama, near the banks of the Chattahoochee River. And yes, that is the river of Ode to Billy Joe fame. Snap is back, and here's the kick by Miller. A good one, a dandy punt. Duncan over the shoulder at the 21, 25. Bertino with a good downfield block, and Duncan is knocked down at the 25-yard line. Tackle made by Jason Ballard, number 25. Five minutes and 26 seconds remaining in the first half of our ball game. A fine football game. We are tied seven and seven. Take care of your car at Kmart. Our automotive service centers care. Shop for Christmas at your Kmart Automotive Center. Save up to $39 on an auto sound system. For just $96, you get an AM FM stereo radio with 8-track or cassette. Plus a pair of great sounding 5-inch or 6x9 coaxial speakers. All for $96 at Kmart Automotive Centers across the U.S. Where quality car products are Kmart priced. When the only sound is the frozen silence of winter, you go to work. Throwing mountains of snow back into the sky. And when the track becomes a railroad again, it's Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. Miller Beer. Miller Beer. ABC's Live World of Sports returns. Top amateurs battled in the World Cup, plus Nadia Komeni and Kurt Thomas expected in the World Gymnastics Championships next Saturday. There's one of the bands that will be performing at halftime. That camera shot, by the way. Well, thank you from Clyde, New York. The camera shot being taken by Ron Kirk up in the end zone. He says, tell him hello back in Glens Falls, New York. He said, we're going to put him on the map. That's his hometown. And the starting center for Ithaca, Bill George, is from Glens Falls, New York. Split backs on first down and 10. Benchko gives it off to Ferrigno. Ferrigno about three. Tim Crow makes the tackle. Update you on Pittsburgh and Penn State going on this afternoon. 14 to 10, Penn State with the lead. You think that isn't a grudge match, Penn State and Pittsburgh? Ooh. They're playing that one in State College, Pennsylvania today. Crow is out. It'll be second down and seven. Scott Gray and Sam Baker, two nose guards are in. Benchko to Ferrigno. Ferrigno near the 34-yard line. Needs to get to the 35. Dwight Porter with the tackle. And Jeff Manchester, number 49, also helped out. 7-7 game, 440 to go, first half. One-yard touchdown run from Tracy King, a 12-yard catch from Jim Meyer. The scoring thus far. Third and one, just shy of the 35. Benchko will throw a short. No, he'll keep it. And he does not pick up the first down. Loses yardage as Mike Dowd's number 76 got in there to cut him down. 
An interesting decision here, third and very short, to take it outside where you have the possibility of coming up with a loss, and he does come up with a loss, Benchko. So punting situation with 3.57 remaining. Dave Whalen is on the kick, and Chris Fields goes back to return it once more. Whalen back inside the 20-yard line. Two punts thus far, and he's pretty well split the difference. A long one of 49, a short one of 29. Good hang time. Boy, he gets this one way up in the air. Fields has the grab at the 26. Look at the downfield coverage. The special teams worked with excellent. Tony Fusero, number 60, made the tackle. There's a look at him, and we'll update you once again on Pitt and Penn State. As that game continues, Pittsburgh has gone on top 17-14 in the second quarter. We are tied at 7. 3.30 to go in the first half. Division three national championship. Mesa Moon goes wide left. Cliff Davis, wide right. Listen to Chuck Delaney. Tracy King, one yard. Don Phillips, the nose guard, makes the tackle. You get a feel that neither team, Vern, has taken control of the game, and it's really, it can go either way right now. I don't get a feel that if the Itzka's in control or Wittenberg's in control, a big play could turn that around. 7-7 seven, seven game would indicate just what John Dockery's talking about. Started off with uh, a lot of explosive acting. It's been kind of in a lull here lately. Let's see what happens now. Second down and 10. Delaney wants to throw, has a man open. That's Cliff Davis at the 29-yard line. Skip Buckley, rather. Number 33 instead of 83 is fullback. Senior little, from Newark, New York. And it's a little surprising to see Buckley in there this long. You know, he's having a lot of knee trouble during the week, and they really were worried that he wouldn't be able to make it. And Skip Buckley is a guy who's averaging 4.7 4 yards a carry and is a key part of their offense, an excellent blocker for Tracy King. They were worried that he might not be able to make it. But if you're ever going to make it, it's going to be in a national championship game. Yeah, you play, you play in this one, right? It's third down and five. Delaney, play action, has a lot of time. But he's flushed out of the pocket and caught short. He'll have to punt. Don Phillips made the tackle. Pretty good downfield coverage by the defensive secondary of Ithaca. Both teams are excellent defensive teams, and it seems to be turning into that kind of a game. I mean, when you look at Wittenberg, their defensive team now allows about eight points a game, and Ithaca is no slouch either. They allow about 10 points a game, so they're both strong defensively. The feeling is, when I look at this game, I think the two teams that should be in the national championship are here. Good, balanced overall teams. Here's the kick from Dave Miller, fairly short. Duncan will let it bounce. It pops straight up in the air and takes a neutral roll to the right side and is finally down at the 34-yard line. So the Ithaca Bombers have the ball back. They've got 99 seconds to march down the field and try and get something more on the board to break the tie. I like her chili, yeah. but it doesn't like me. Feel better fast with dye gel. I like devil ham, but it doesn't like me. Feel better fast with dye gel. With the ingredients in dye gel, relief from acid indigestion and gas starts in less than a minute. I like green banana, but they don't like me. Feel better fast with dye gel. Dye gel relief starts in less than a minute. Nowadays, some small foreign cars can cost a small fortune. $7,000 for a small car? But then there's Chevy Chevette, priced a whole lot less than some foreign cars. What you need is a four-door Chevette. It's priced over $300 less than Toyota and Datsun, and over $1,000 less than VW Ram. Terrific! Yet still with standard white striped tires, body side moldings, AM radio, reclining front bucket seats, and much, much more. The 1980 Chevy Chevette. It hasn't forgotten what value is all about. We are back with one minute and 39 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Halftime will feature 12 high school bands from the Phoenix City area. 7-7 ball game, and this will not end in a tie. There's a tiebreaker procedure used in the Division 1AA, Division 2, and Division 3 championship games or playoff games. I've seen it before, and it's, it's marvelous. They, they go to a tiebreaker. We'll talk more about that as the situation warrants later in the game. Two wide receivers right side, one left. Benchko looking deep, fires it deep. Duncan diving, try at the 50 incomplete. Thought he had it. 
So did I. That was beautifully delivered, that pass. Watch Bench go here. A little play action fake, not much. Looks back and delivers that ball with authority over the top. Look at that over the top. Right on the money to Duncan. I'm surprised. Duncan's a fairly sure-handed receiver. Beautiful delivery by Benchko. Benchko is 5 out of 12 for 50 yards. It's second down and 10. Niccolo, fumble. Wittenberg's got the ball, I believe. Let's see. There has been no official indication yet. No, Ithaca retains possession. Thought for a moment, Wittenberg had the turnover with just over a minute. Chris Hardy made the recovery. And alertly. Alertly, luckily. Yeah, right. <laughs> Forget the alert, thank you. <laughs> Third down, 23. go get him. I'll take it conservative. Benchko breaks into the secondary. He's down to the 31-yard line. That was made by Dwight Porter, number 55. We've got under a minute remaining in the first half of play, 42 seconds now. And the punt return unit comes on. There's a player down for Wittenberg at the 30-yard line. So the clock has been stopped for the injured player. I'm not sure. Roger Brown is the injured player, number 18, senior from Bucyrus, Ohio. Roger Brown, the starting right cornerback, injured after making the tackle on Doug Benchko. Let's hope he's all right. I, he's a senior in the last game. It'd be a shame to see him get injured here. I remember in college run, last game of a senior's career, um, two plays left in the game and broke his leg. And I always thought it was such a, a horrible irony that you play a whole year and then all of a sudden two plays to go in your career and you come up with an injury like that. So let's hope that Roger Brown is okay. This is the first game of a doubleheader, of course, and coming up at the conclusion of our game this afternoon on the first day of December, the Army-Navy game from Philadelphia. That series, as we told you, first started back in 1890. <laughs> we were talking about Roger Staubach a while ago, John. They asked him after one of the Super Bowl games if it was his proudest moment. He says, well, next to Army-Navy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they take it seriously, folks. And you'll see that game, Army and Navy, this afternoon over most of these ABC stations. Speaking of Roger Starback, you know, he was an excellent baseball player also. We played against each other when he was at Navy and I was at Harvard a number of times. And uh, he was not only a fine football player, he had a great arm as a baseball player also. Dave Maurer, the head coach of Wittenberg, concerned now because one of his young athletes is down on the field, Roger Brown. It looks like they're looking at his right knee or right leg, not sure. Dave Maurer, 25 years at the same institution, the only coaching job he's had. He was an assistant for the first 15. There's Jimmy Butterfield. He was an assistant at Colgate, right? Before he went to Ithaca at one time. Jim Butterfield, yes. Let's see if we can see what might have happened to Roger Brown. We'll take another look at it here, John. Here we see Doug Benchko running. Roger Brown coming into the play there. Oh, oh yes, his right knee looks like it gets caught underneath him when he's pushed back by that mass of humanity. That's a horrible feeling when you feel a thousand pounds of, of bodies on top of you and you're stuck underneath there and something isn't right and you want them to get off. Look at it again, and you can see the right knee. Watch right number 18. Knee. He's in good position for the tackle. He meets him. There's just so much power behind Benchko, half of his own team. His leg gets caught underneath him and bent back. I'd, I'd suspect it's a knee. Roger Brown is still down at the 30-yard line, and they will need us to take, take all precaution and see if they can't uh, treat him as best they can. Roger Brown, senior from View Cyrus, has been a starter for the last couple of years for Wittenberg. And they're going to bring the stretcher on and, and uh, take him immediately to the uh, dressing room. Well, that's, that's a shame. Part of the crowd gathered here at Phoenix City, Alabama. Gorgeous day. Temperature in the 50s. A little chilly up here in the booth because we're in the shade. I notice you've got your overcoat on. 
Roger Brown once again is the injured player for Wittenberg's Tigers and they will take him on a stretcher to the locker room. Trying to make the tackle on Doug Benchko on that last play and as John pointed out he had tremendous position on the play and it was just one of those quirks that uh, his teammates and Benchko happened to fall on him. Isn't that nice to hear the applause from, from everybody, <laughs> both teams? I mean, you don't want to be applauded, but at least they appreciate what, he, what his effort and, and what he's going through. Pittsburgh over Penn State now, 20 to 14. Pittsburgh, of course, has lost only once thus far this year. Boston College over Holy Cross, 3 0 in the second quarter of play. Division II semifinal game, Delaware over Mississippi College, 21 to 3. Winner of that game meets the winner of this one, Youngstown State over Alabama A&M. And they will play for the national championship in Albuquerque, New Mexico next Saturday. And that game will be televised on a regional basis. Here's Roger Brown being taken into the locker room now for the Wittenberg Tigers. Vern, one of the things that when I was playing college and pro ball, they used to park the ambulance down the end of the field in the end zone. And before the game, you'd be warming up and you'd see that that ominous vehicle sitting down there and wondering if it was going to be your day or not. I mean, football's a tough game, and I guess that's part of it all. You don't like to admit it, but if you're hitting people and running into people, injury is part of it. It'll be fourth down now with uh, 42 seconds to go in the first half of play. Here's the punt by Dave Whalen. Relatively short this time. Catch is made at the 16 by John Saxton, and he gets out of bounds to kill the clock, and a flag is thrown. We may have a personal foul, a necessary roughness on the far side. John Saxon made the uh, kick return. Bob Campese, the tackle. We'll look at it again. Saxon, you see Saxon heading out of bounds, which you should, and here comes the late hit right there. Sends Saxon into the band. Tony Fusaro made the late hit, and that 15-yarder means that Wittenberg has got the ball now at the 43-yard line with 33 seconds to go. 7-7 seven, seven ball game. And here comes Chuck Delaney, the senior quarterback. Two wide receivers right side, one is split left. Delaney wants a look at the football, and they'll make the change as per his request. 7-7 game, 33 seconds to go in the first half of play. Motion from Tracy King. Delaney, quarterback draw. What a play, huh? At the 27-yard line. How about that? <laughs> a great play. A great play. Everyone expecting pass. Ithaca playing that prevent defense. And what does Delaney do? Look at the riverboat gamble. It takes a few steps back. Everybody starts to drift. There he goes, makes a good cut and gets a good block here. Takes it up for a good gain of first down within striking distance for a touchdown, which is 20 sec 26 seconds left. Vern. Chuck Delaney in the conference championship game, as you see, 181 yards rushing. John asked him yesterday if he liked to run. He just got a smile a mile wide and said, yeah, <laughs> sure do. 7-7 seven, seven game, 26 seconds to go. Wittenberg has used one of its timeouts now to kill the clock. They've got two remaining, but it's their second timeout they've used. This is Delaney's second year as a starter. Last year, his team was 10-1-1. One, one. This year, they're undefeated, successful quarterback. Nine for 38 in the first half this afternoon. He's talked it over with Dave Maurer. Gets back in the huddle. First down, 10 at the 27-yard line. With 26 seconds to go. And here come the Tigers of Wittenberg University. Two wide receivers to the right side, Davis and Meso Moon. A flip out to Tracy King, and then that weight that uh, almost was a lateral. Ooh, but I think that was a lateral. Very close to being one. Sure was. Let's take, take a look it at it again. The motion. He tries to get the ball to King in a hurry. Ooh, very close. I mean, I'm surprised more of the players didn't react. That ball can be recovered by the defensive team. If that ball is, is thrown backwards, it's uh, anybody's ball. But it was ruled an incomplete pass. Second down and 10, 23 seconds to go. Moon and Davis right side. And Dave Frazier split wide to the left. Draw play, Tracy King to the 20. Down at the 17 yard line with 17 seconds remaining and timeout called. 
as they move the chain for the first down. He's very close for it. Good call. I mean, everyone looking for the pass again here. Tracy King takes it up the middle. Dave Maurer calling the plays, obviously, again. Nice move there. Oh, very quick move. Tracy King, bread and butter. I'm reminded now of something that Chuck Delaney told both of us yesterday about Dave Maurer making the play calls. Said, did he ever disagree with him? He said, well, no, he says, I think a lot like the coach does. He said, but every once in a while, I'll be in the huddle and they'll bring it in. And I'll think, why that one? And sure enough, it'll work. And I wonder if maybe that's what he had in mind there. There's Dave Bauer and uh, Delaney talking it over. There has been a meeting of the minds. Of course, uh, Delaney's been schooled by Maurer, but he was telling us, remember, it was fourth and seven, and uh, Maurer sent in a trap play, and the offensive team looked at one another, and Delaney called the play. Sure enough, gave the trap. Guy made the first down, and they went in to score in a very crucial situation. So, I mean, when, when you have a coach like Dave Maurer who has been that successful, I would say that you'd accept the fact that he's accumulated some football knowledge in 25 years of winning and that uh, you'd have some confidence in his play calling. 7-7 seven, seven game. We've got word on Roger Brown, a possible dislocation of his knee. That's the preliminary report. And his ankle is also injured. 16 seconds to go. First and 10, Delaney looks in the end zone. Throws it deep, too deep. Intended for Meso Moon, but it winds up in the tuba section. Gonna try that field goal, it looks like, Vern. 10 seconds to go. They'll not waste the time. Mike Dowds, who won the ball game last week with a 41-yard kick into the win with two seconds remaining, will come on to try and break the tie. Kirby Thompson will hold. There's a look at Mike Dowds. This will be from the 24-yard line, a 34-yard kick that could give Wittenberg the halftime lead. Kick is up. Kick is good. He got it. Not only good, he should have kicked out another 15 yards. I watched him in practice yesterday, Mike Dowds, and he was hitting him pretty good. Nice kick under pressure. A few seconds left in the half, just five seconds. Puts him up. 10-7, Wittenberg ahead, 10-7. Look at it again. Watch how much power he gets into this kick. He, oh, he almost shanks it. Eight, seven seconds, six seconds, five seconds. Five seconds remaining in the first half of play. And Mike Dowds has kicked his eighth field goal of the year. He is eight of 12 for the year. And Dowds will now kick off. He's a starting defensive end. Number 80, Jimmy Duncan is deep. One of the two deep men, Terry Jarvie, is also back there. 10-7, Wittenberg has the lead with five seconds remaining. You have Interesting. To look, Go ahead, Vern. You have to look for some kind of a squib here. I'd be doubt, I doubt they kick it away. There it is. Look at the bounce. Whoops. Got it. Jimmy Duncan at the 15-20. Up high and down at the 24-yard line, and that's it. Time has expired in the first half of play. Tackle made by Joe Cobell, number 37. It's halftime. We're in Dixie. We are in Phoenix City, Alabama. As the Rebel flag waves in the breeze. Wittenberg University has the lead at the end of the first half, 10 to 7. Saturday. ABC. <laughs> Twas right around Christmas, and as you can see, Arthur Treacher's giving gift certificates free. Don't pay for gift certificates, get them free with a family pack. Coupons can save lots of money for you. On fish, on chicken, on shrimp and clams, too. Certificates and coupons worth more than $5 free when you buy an Arthur Treacher family pack. Daddy, afterwards, don't forget to bring home our family pack. Free gift certificates. <laughs> Today, we'd like to compare the performance of this Jeep truck to a tank. Ready, go! 
Notice the fantastic traction of Jeep four-wheel drive. Tank's doing well, too. Jeep truck has great ground clearance. Tank doesn't need any. Jeep truck's very maneuverable. The Tank doesn't have to be. Plus, with a Jeep truck, you can pick up a date. With a Tank, it's nearly impossible. Jeep truck. From the truck division of Jeep Corporation. WKEF-TV, Dayton 22. In the last decade, a dramatic increase in interest in sports on the part of girls and women has occurred in this country. The nation's colleges have responded by enlarging their athletic programs for women many times over. Let's visit three institutions and examine women's programs in 1979. Women's athletics at the University of Illinois is exciting and fast growing. Over the last 10 years, we've experienced quality coaching, highly competitive schedules, and outstanding performances on the part of the student athletes. I think probably three things have made women's intercollegiate athletics grow. First and foremost, Title IX. Uh, secondly, the wonderful talent that's shown in the Olympic Games by young women. And third, the fact that television brought it all into the living room. Specifically, our goal in, in the athletic program at USC and in the total university is to provide a quality of opportunity for women in athletics and men in athletics. Not to deny opportunity, but to ensure that academic and athletic opportunity will go hand in hand with the total university. Women's sport is going to continue to expand and grow um, AIAW continues to add more and more championships, and I think that many, many institutions are adding more and more sports. The great difference is that at this time, we're getting much greater financial support and really a greater awareness by people at the university and the public about the fact that women do love to participate in sport and, in fact, are very talented at it. The preceding message was furnished by the NCAA. Lundquist and John Dockery back at halftime of the Amos Alonzo Stag Bowl in Phoenix City, Alabama. And 12 high school bands from this area collaborate with a fine halftime presentation. They are under the direction of Tommy Binion, who is the director of bands at the Central High School in Phoenix City. Total of 12 high school bands. Ought to be a fun show. Hope you'll enjoy it. Those of you back in the northern part of the country watching this battle between Wittenberg and Ithaca. And they march on to formation right now. By the way, there was band competition at the Christmas parade this morning. And if you want to file this away, the Class B division winner was Ashford High School of Ashford, Alabama. Second place went to Bessemer Academy from Bessemer, Alabama. Third place to Lyman Ward Military Academy from Camp Hill, Alabama. And in the Class A category, winning team was, or the band rather, Valley Senior High School from Fairfax, Alabama. Second place to Valley Junior High School from Fairfax, Alabama. And third place to Dale County High School from Midland City, Alabama. And now, the 12 bands under the direction of Tommy Binion.
The 12 high school bands under the direction of Tommy Binion saluting the Amos Alonzo Stag Bowl. Halftime with our score, Wittenberg leading Ithaca College by a count of 10 to 7. Ithaca College, of course, located in one of the gorgeous parts of our country, the Finger Lakes region of New York. Let's take a look at the Ithaca College campus. Ithaca is the largest private residential college in New York State. Our nearly 4,500 undergraduates are enrolled in six schools offering 48 major fields of study. The hub of our academic programs is the School of Humanities and Sciences, with 22 departments and 1,800 students. And specialized undergraduate professional education is offered in our schools of communications, music, allied health services, business, and health, physical education, and recreation. Ithaca conducts an extensive athletic program, fielding 12 men's and 10 women's varsity teams. Performance is at the heart of the Ithaca College experience. The playing fields, concert halls, theaters, laboratories, and broadcast studios of our striking modern 400-acre campus make it possible for Ithaca students to play an active role in their own education. You know, for business insurance, Fireman's Fund fits most everyone, large or small. For example, it helps ensure a business as global as Alice Chalmers, or as local as Gershevsky Tractor, as big as the Chicago Tribune, or the Cape Cod Chronicle, even the Boston Symphony. So for your business insurance, ask your independent agent about Fireman's Fund. Large or small, this hat is just your size. In the yellow pages, Fireman's Fund Insurance Companies. New excitement on ABC's Wide World of Sports, beginning Saturday with top amateur sluggers in World Cup Boxing. Plus, two-week coverage of the World Gymnastics Championships with Nadia Komanich, America's Kurt Thomas, and more expected. Later in December, world champions Babylonia and Gardner and Linda Fradiani will dazzle you. And to cheer in the new decade, a memorable tour of the greatest moments in sports in the 70s. The celebration begins Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports. We're back at halftime in Phoenix City, Alabama, 10-7, Wittenberg over Ithaca College. And a very even ball game reflected by the statistics at halftime. John Dockery, you might want to have a comment as we look at these. Fairly balanced. You look at those total yards, and there are only a few yards difference. Rushing yardage is close, passing yards, 50 for each team. So the way the score is, it's 10 to 7. Wittenberg, uh, there are some breaks in the game, but I think we have a football game on our hands in the second half that can go either way, as we talked about at the beginning of the show, Vern. Well, that's one of the more unusual casts you will see, huh? It's nice <laughs> to see a little creativity. <laughs> Scoring summary in the first quarter, Wittenberg took a lead, 7-0, a one-yard run by Tracy King. In the second quarter, Ithaca came back to tie it up, an 11-yard pass from Doug Benchko to Jim Meyer. And then with five seconds remaining in the first half, Mike Dowds authored a 34-yard field goal on an unusual drive set up by a personal foul and two running plays, a quarterback draw and a draw play to his tailback. And they got the field goal of 34 yards by Mike Dowds. And that's how we stand at 10-7 halftime. Wittenberg University on top of Ithaca College by those three points. And the halftime show continues here in Phoenix City, Alabama. Wittenberg University, a church-affiliated school located, or rather affiliated with the Lutheran Church in America, located in the lovely town of Springfield, Ohio. And while the halftime presentation continues here at Phoenix City, Alabama, let's take a look at Wittenberg University. Wittenberg University is an independent liberal arts college of high quality and outstanding reputation. Founded in 1845 by pioneering Germans of Lutheran descent, Wittenberg has maintained the adventurous spirit of its founders, ensuring that its graduates are well prepared to be leaders of contemporary society. A 70-acre hilly and wooded campus in a residential area provides a tranquil setting for one of the most vigorous Lutheran Church in America colleges. The 2,300 students may engage in independent study, off-campus and international programs, 
and assume leadership positions in student government and extracurricular activities. Wittenberg president, Dr. William A. Kinnison, is a leading authority on private higher education and an advisor to the chancellor of the Board of Regents of the state of Ohio. Under his leadership, Wittenberg has launched a campaign for improved library and physical education facilities, endowment to support faculty, and scholarships to offset rising costs. Halftime with our score, Wittenberg on top by a 10-7 count. Very even ball game here for the Division III National Championship. John Dockery, a look at the first touchdown of the game. All right, Chuck Delaney here handing off to Tracy King. King taking it over the top with a one-yard plunge and the touchdown. That was set up by the penalty. I don't know if you call Reverend. Uh, pass interference penalty gave him the ball on the one-yard line. They took it in to go ahead 7-zip. Then, of course, uh, Ithaca came back to tie it up on a touchdown pass. It went from Doug Bonchek, and uh, Jim Meyer was the receiver. Yeah, here you see number 16, Doug Bencho, Benchko, throwing a nice 12-yard touchdown pass to his receiver, Jim Meyer, here. Meyer takes it in. It's his first TV reception this year. Jim Meyer from bench goal. The extra point was good. That tied it up at 7-7. And then Mike Dowds kicked the 34-yard field goal, of course, with five seconds remaining in the first half to uh, wind it up 10-7 at halftime uh, here in Phoenix City, Alabama. Halftime festivities continue. They're making the announcement of the band winners right now. We gave you those earlier. 23-14, Pittsburgh over Penn State. That's a second quarter score. Boston College leading Holy Cross 10-0. That's at halftime of that ball game. Vanderbilt over Tennessee. That's a bit of an upset in the first quarter. It's 10-0 as Vandy has the lead. Johnny Major's doing a fine job of rebuilding that Tennessee program. They've had a good year, and they are bound for a bowl, but Vanderbilt has a 10-0 lead in the first quarter of play. Division II semifinal game being played in Newark, Delaware today, 21-3. Delaware on top of Mississippi College. Winner of that game will meet the winner of this one. It looks like it's going to be Youngstown State. They had a great ball game a year ago, a great ball club a year ago. Were defeated by Eastern Illinois in the uh, semifinals in Division II one year ago. But they uh, look like they're going on to the championship game now. They have a 24-0 lead over Alabama A&M. And the uh, two winners of those two games will meet in Albuquerque, New Mexico next week. December the 8th for the Division II National Championship. That game will be televised over on a regional basis. We are at halftime. It's 10-7 Wittenberg on top over Ithaca College as Mike Dowds kicked the field goal that gave Wittenberg a lead, 10-7. Series record between these two teams, by the way, is 0-2. Uh, in this Amos Alonzo Stag Bowl in 1975, uh, Wittenberg won that game 28 to nothing. And then last year in the first round of the playoffs, Wittenberg kicked two field goals to defeat Ithaca by a count of 6-3. So they know each other over the years, have played twice, and they are meeting for the third time this afternoon. Ithaca still looking for its first victory in this series. And the awards at halftime continue. Various bands are being given trophies for their performance in the competition here in Phoenix City, Alabama. They have a big Christmas parade, 10 o'clock this morning. All of these bands took uh, part in that. They're announcing the Bessemer Academy Band now. And these are some of the floats that were in the parade that are parked in the baseball field. And a cheer went up for one of the bands that just won the award from Bessemer, Alabama. My goodness, I think they just won the Division III championship. They're kind of excited. <laughs> and the uh, presentation of awards continues at halftime. Fairfax, Alabama. The Stag Bowl, Ithaca versus Wittenberg, is being brought to you by Chevrolet and your participating Chevy dealers who invite you to come take a special test drive during Chevy's National Economy Drive. By Texaco, with over 66,000 employees doing their best at their jobs, 
to keep your trust. And by Pizza Hut, where every pizza is made by hand from our own fresh dough, just for you. When you're coming in to Pizza Hut, you're coming in for good. Halftime with our score, Wittenberg on top of Ithaca, 10-7. We'll continue with the halftime show right after these messages. Chevy's National Economy Drive is on. Chevy's got the drive. Chevy's got it. With values like the 1980 Caprice and Impala and the best EPA gas mileage estimates ever in a full-size Chevrolet. See America's best-selling full-size wagon now with diesel power. Chevy's got the drive. Come and get it. Get Chevy's free booklet on fuel-saving tips and take a special test drive that lets you see how good driving skills can improve your gas mileage to help you go farther on less. It's Chevy's National Economy Drive. Uh -huh. I just discovered oil. I just discovered oil. People are discovering Texaco's new Haviland Supreme, the motor oil with a special friction fighter that's been proven in fuel economy tests. Extensive tests showed that two of the leading 10W40 motor oils advertising extra gasoline mileage couldn't beat new Haviland Supreme. And you still get Haviland's trooper-tested engine protection, too. Discover new Haviland Supreme. Protection plus unbeaten mileage. Okay, guys, no kidding. What'd you think of my catch? Hey, first things first. Three Michelob lights? Michelob light? Sure, me too. I'll have a Michelob light. <laughs> the rich, full-bodied taste of Michelob light. Compare it to any beer you like. This Michelob light's sensational. <laughs> now tell me, should I have my fish mounted? No, put it on a bun. Michelob light. Compare the taste to any beer you like. Yeah. Hello, everybody. This is Lowell Thomas at Lake Placid, New York, where one of the world's most important sporting events is soon to take place. Over 1,400 of the finest athletes from all nations will be here. The cost comes high, but the rewards are even higher. So send your tax-deductible contribution to Winter Olympics, Lake Placid, New York, Bucks 1980A. So long. Halftime score, 10-7, Wittenberg University on top of Ithaca College here in Phoenix City, Alabama. Hi, once again, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with John Dockery. John, what are your expectations for the second half? As we expected, it's a toss-up. The game's both powerhouses, as we talked about in Division Three. The game is even. I mean, look at the total yardage. Uh, 150 for Wittenberg, 122 for Ithaca. They couldn't get much closer than that. Uh, both quarterbacks having reasonable days. Uh, Delaney, 6 for 15 for 50 yards. Benchko, 5 for 12 for 50 yards. Game can go either way. I would guess, John, that in a situation like this, we might look for a turnover to be the key to the whole thing. Turnover, possible penalty, but I'd hate to see the game won that way. I like good, hard-nosed football, but the game being won by the players themselves can go either way. John Dockery, our analyst this afternoon, and uh, we look forward to his continued comments in the second half. We are just about to get the second half underway. Wittenberg will kick off and be defending the north goal. Ithaca College trailing by three. They will receive what, what little breeze there is is blowing from left to right out of the north, but it's not much more than eight to nine miles an hour. Again, the temperature in the mid-50s. It's a delightful day. Interesting from the perspective of one who lives in the south. Jimmy Butterfield, the coach, said yesterday, well, I'm glad it's not going to be a hot day like something in the 70s. <laughs> to us, that's cool. And 55 degrees is uh, a delightful day in which to, to play football, especially to settle a national championship like this. Terry Jarvie, along with Jim Duncan, back to receive. Lou Volpicelli, our producer today, ordinarily a director, doing a good job. Ian John DeLisa down in the truck. Hope you're enjoying it. Here's Jarvie. Returns it back to the 20-yard line, 25, 30, and cut down at the 30-yard line. First down and 10, Ithaca. The tackle is made by Mike Dowds, number 76. Okay, Ithaca gets a chance. Now they're down 10 to 7, and uh, Doug Benchko brings them out. Three wide receivers, as we expected all day, Vern. They're going to be opening up their attack, and they have their three wide receivers in there. First down and 10. Benchko will keep it. And he's dragged down from behind at the 35-yard line. 
Joe Govern, number 73, makes the tackle for Wittenberg. Look at it again. Run pass option here. Benchko, I think, wanted to throw it, made a good decision, turns it up, gets clocked right here. Watch this. Bang. Pays the penalty for getting those yards. It'll be second down and five. Just underway, second quarter. You look at Joe Govern, number 73. Split backs. Hand off right side. John Niccolo and Dwight Porter, number 55, makes the hit. And that will bring up a third down. Bob Linton has replaced Roger Brown at cornerback. Where's number 36, a sophomore from Orfield, Pennsylvania. There's Dwight Porter, who just made the tackle. Once again, Roger Brown, our report, possible dislocation of his right knee and an ankle injury, injured late in the first half of play. It's third down and two, Ithaca. Three wide receiver offense once again, two are to the left side, one split wide right. Benchko hands it off to Ferrigno, and he appears to have a first down 10. 200-pound junior from Huntington, New York, across the 40 out to the 41-yard line. Jeff Manchester, number 49, made the tackle. Key blocked by Chris Hardy, and another Wittenberg player is down at the 40-yard line. Ferrigno for the day now, with 42 yards on 10 carries. Looks like Sam Baker, the injured player, senior nose guard from Bucyrus, Ohio. It is Baker. And he's down at the 40-yard line. You know, he's had some knee problems in the past, Sam Baker has, and I uh, hope that's not the re uh, recurring injury. We heard a lot of 1970, and I see the yep. uh, motioning of the knee. Right knee. There's Dave Maurer on the near sideline. Coming up Monday night, ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, key game for both ball clubs, the Oakland Raiders and the Snake, Kenny Staper, who's from these parts, against New Orleans Saints. Uh, Archie Manning and crew under Dick Nolan. They're tied with the Los Angeles Rams for the division lead, so a very important game for both ball clubs. Oakland still has a playoff chance. A lot of people counted them out last week, Vern, but they came on strong against Denver. Who do you like in that game? Oakland. Ah, you're an AFC guy. Oh. I should have known. <laughs> <laughs> Spend five years with the Jets and two with Pittsburgh. There wasn't much love lost between the Jets and Oakland, believe me. Oh. We had some grudge battles, and uh, but I think Oakland is a team that you can never count out. They have so much talent. Sam Baker is the injured player, and uh, Wittenberg can ill afford to lose another player. If Sam Baker is unable to continue, which looks like it will be the case, uh, we'll see Scott Gray, the 5'11", 200-pound junior, and uh, last year, uh, they voted him the most improved player. That is number 51, Scott Gray, Sam Baker's replacement. So in terms of a drop-off, they have two nose guards who can play there. But uh, And there's Jim Butterfield looking on, Dave Maurer. A lot of respect for those two coaches uh, between each other. They really appreciate the job the other has done. You catch that in their conversations. And unfortunately, for the second time today, they are having to bring the stretcher on. And this time it'll be Sam Baker who is uh, taken to the dressing room for treatment. Timeout has been called on the field. Our score is 10 to 7. Uh, Sam Baker is the injured player. I'd like to talk to you about the Sony Betamax and an incredible feature called Betascan. I'm Tom Williams Sr. And if you know tennis, you know my son. Here's a cassette of his last championship match. Beta scan lets me go fast forward in reverse so I can skip the boring stuff like this long rally and stop when I come to the real exciting parts like Tom Jr. here dashing onto the court to pick up the ball. Isn't Betamax terrific? It lets you see what you've been missing and miss what you don't want to see. It's from Sony, the one and only. When you go to the movies and you're glad you did. It's United Artists. <laughs> that's Transamerica. When you rent a car and get the feeling that you're number one. That's budget rent a car. That's Transamerica. When your property is well insured and your independent agent is understanding. That's Transamerica Insurance. The many companies in the Transamerica family all stand for just one thing. First rate service at a fair price. That's Transamerica. Next, one of the fiercest, oldest, and most colorful college rivalries, a classic clash, the Army-Navy game on ABC. The injured player is Sam Baker. <laughs> Excuse me. Sam Baker, and he is being taken to the locker room. Will be the second player that Wittenberg has lost this afternoon. Roger Brown made that sad trip 
late in the first half. We're just about set to go back to play. An eerie thing happened during the uh, commercial break. I'm standing up looking at the folks down in front. Several have transistor radios on, and all of a sudden they stood and cheered. And I got to believe that either Alabama or Auburn, one of them scored. <laughs> Look at the offensive stance that these linemen take. We'll take another look at that in a second. And John Dockery has some comments. There's a pass incomplete out of bounds. It'll be second down. Jim Duncan, the intended receiver. Saxton was the defensive back covering. John, they go into a, what amounts to a four-point stance, don't they, in that offensive line? And you don't see that that often these days, a four-point stance. It's a throwback to last year when they were strictly a running team. Watch them as yeah, they get down now. Put their hands down. Most teams use a three-point stance, for, especially for pass blocking. That's generally a run blocking technique by the offensive line. Bench go incomplete for Duncan. Dale Bradford doing the defensive work, and it'll be third down and 10. With your permission, I'm going to sit back down and get closer to this space heater, John. Okay. <laughs> Doug Benchko, again, delivers the ball on the money. A little bit high, certainly catchable by Jim Duncan. And you saw Bob Linton, number 36, who was also in the uh, defensive area. It'll be third down now. Bench goal for the day is five out of 14. Goes deep into triple coverage, and what a price Jimmy Duncan paid at the 42-yard line. Hit by John Saxton and Bob Linton. Boy, did he get racked up from behind. He sure did. Bensko actually threw into a crowd there. There were a lot of defensive backs. He had some receivers open on the other side. You won't see it here. But he looks back, and there's a crowd. And watch number 16 take his shot right there. And he told me before that he wanted a shot like that to make the receivers respect. And that's number 16, John Saxton, the big 6'4 safety that we talked about at the top of the show, Vern. Here's the kick. Whalen taken short. Ball is knocked down. It's... Look who did it. Dave Burchard. And number 47, John Laper. You know, Laper told me most teams will keep a lot of their starters off those special teams. Laper pestered the coaches so much that they had to put him back on it. You see the gleam in his eye when he talks about hitting people. He told me he wanted to hit someone on every play. Did you play special teams, John? I sure did. <laughs> Want to know what I think? What? you got to be crazy to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know? You're right, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the handoff, a fumble, but the Wittenberg recovers. That was Buckley. Harry Moss made the tackle at the 41-yard line. Uh, it's not for nothing they call them the kamikaze squads. <laughs> I know. Suicide squads. But you have to do it. I mean, in Division Three, you have to have your starters playing on that's that. Right. Because, uh, you know, that's an important part of the game, as we know. Second down and five. Wittenberg, slot eye formation. Handoff goes hey, to Buckley John. again. He skips through and picks up a first down plus four. One of the few times you'll see Laper get caught. Watch. Yeah, here's Laper moving. All right. He overruns the play slightly, and he's he's hampered by not a great block, but one when your momentum is taking you that way that it'll push you by the hole. So Laper's uh, react reactions were so much that side that he actually overran the play. That block from Wade LaForce, the tiny left guard. Here's Delaney on the roll. Has a man in front. That's Ramsey. Ramsey with a block. Delaney with a run. First down at the 35. You had a chance then to see a good downfield open block by Tony Ramsey. Tony Smith finally made the tackle. Ramsey, the co-captain, number 65. Interesting, number 65 is the only guy on this team with a championship ring from 1975. And this is an all-senior offense, and he was showing it to all the Wittenberg players yesterday, saying, look, we go out and win the Stag Bowl tomorrow. You'll all have championship rings just like me. <laughs> First and 10. Pitch back to Creasy King. He's knocked down to 30, and you can hear the pounding from our on-field mic. John Laper, number 47, delivering the blow. Watch the last part of that last play. Tracy King was 61 yards today. There's the pitch. Trace, this is a bread and butter, the option. Tracy King takes it upfield, and he means business when he gets in here. So he gets those extra few yards for you by just taking it upfield. Five and a half yards of carry. 
Second down and three, Meso Moon in motion wide to the left side. Buckley gets the handoff. Nice blow delivered by Harry Moss, the linebacker. At the 25-yard line, that's close for the first down. See where they spot the ball. It'll be short by about a yard. And that will bring up a third down and one. You know, we talk so much about John Labor that sometimes we, we forget about number 33, Harry Moss, who has 103 tackles this year. Third down and one. Davis goes wide to the left side. You're looking at Chuck Delaney. His backs are in the eye. Pitch out, Tracy King. Buckley misses the block on John Bertino, but uh, Tracy King did pick up the first down. Laper with the tackle. Bread and butter, just the eye pitch. Buckley leads the play, a block. And watch Laper come in here and finish it off. Ouch. <laughs> first down 10 at the 24-yard line. 10-7 game, 10.06 to go in the third quarter. Delaney in trouble. Caught and dropped by the nose guard, Don Phillips, a senior from Hamburg, New York. Good penetration all along that defensive front line then by Ithaca. By the way, I alluded to that roar from the fans a while ago. We got a note. Auburn and Alabama playing 25 miles down the road. Auburn fumbled the opening kickoff. Alabama recovered at the 23-yard line. That's the word. That's why they were standing and cheering. Well, I'm, Alabama needs some help, don't they? <laughs> If Alabama wins that, of course, they'll go on to the Sugar Bowl, and you'll see that game on ABC. Hand off to Tracy King, into the secondary, at the 20, the 15, the 14-yard line. Tackle made by Mark Seaman, a sophomore from Johnson City, New York. You know, you watch Tracy King, and I have to feel for him. Here's a player that was behind the great Davey Merritt for three years and has come into his own. Davey Merritt, you may recall, was a great running back for Wittenberg, had a shot with the Buffalo Bills, didn't make it, and is playing pro ball in Canada. But Tracy King had to put up with that for three years, and now he's come into his own. He's having a fine day here today. His last game, power eye formation. King again, not much there this time. Door is closed rather rudely by Jimmy Hoffman, number 66, and John Laper again. I think you folks will know his name by then. All over. You know, Davey Mano told me that he had a great back in, in merit for those three years, but in a way it was a drawback having such a great back because he couldn't diversify his offense. It was give the ball to merit, give the ball to merit. With the result, they didn't have a passing game, and he felt that that's why they lost to Baldwin Wallace right here a year ago in the stag ball. They're more diversified now. It's they can fourth down ball. and one. Delaney, he's got it. First down at the 12-yard line. Tackle made by Bob Campese, number 10. But Delaney got the first down to keep the drive going. That's what Davey Maurer said. He said Delaney has to have a good day. And he didn't necessarily mean that he had to break any long runs or complete that many passes, but he had to make good decisions on the options, like right there, taking himself for the first down. 7.53 to go, third quarter. This has been an impressive drive by the Wittenberg Tigers. Meso Moon, fake, Delaney has it, cuts up field, fumbles the ball, and there's a scramble. Ithaca says it's ours. Officials have not so indicated. Yes, Ithaca recovers inside the 10-yard line. Mike Biondi came up with a big skin, number 14. Here's Delaney. He's running a bootleg. He's pulling the guard. You see number 60 leading up. He cuts it back up inside. Just coughs up the ball. And, and uh, Mike Biondi, number 14, comes up with a recovery. A big break for Ithaca. Doug Benchko hands it off right side. John Niccolo. Joe Govern makes the tackle, number 73. He's across the 10 out near the 12-yard line. Looks like Wittenberg's offensive team might be a little angry. <laughs> Defensive team might be a little angry at their offense. You see that hitting and then that gang tackling? Fumbles thus far. Wittenberg has coughed it up twice, Ithaca once. This one the most costly because Wittenberg was driving, hoping to increase what is now a three-point lead. 7.05 to go third quarter, 10-7. Hand off to Ferrigno, one yard at most, out to the 12. Dale Bradford made the tackle, the senior from Oberlin, Ohio. 
Yeah, very, very important play, Vern. Third and about seven yards. Ithaca just got a break and they have to capitalize on it. If they can't, they give the ball back to Wittenberg in reasonable field position. Bench so, goal is, excuse me, John, five out of 15. Go ahead. I think Bench goal will put it up right here. I think you'll see a curl pattern maybe to Duncan. Seven. Possibly Seven. Jarvie, number nine, the slot man. Two. And instead they hand it off to Nicola. <laughs> Surprising call. Yeah, it really was. Really was. Third down. Third, third down and seven. You have to be a little bit surprised on that. It's kind of defensive football, and I guess uh, I was a little surprised. Well, here's Doug Benchko. It's a straight handoff right there to, to Nicolo. Uh, doesn't make it, and uh, it's defensive football. Scott Gray and Dale Bradford getting their shoulders together. Dave Whalen's on to punt now, and Wittenberg ought to get this in great field position. Chris Fields waits for it. This is not the best kick that Whalen has gotten off today. It does. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Number 43. <laughs> Ithaca gets it again. I believe that was John Saxton who fumbled the ball. I'm not sure. They're unstacking the bodies at the 43-yard line, so back-to-back -back fumbles for Wittenberg. The man upstairs likes Ithaca. It looks. Is that the man who recovered the... F yeah. Okay. Chris Hardy. Chris Hardy got it. It's first down at the 42-yard line. New life for the Ithaca Bombers. They trail 10-7 with 5.40 to go third quarter. Niccolo gets the handoff, two yards out to the 45. Jeff Manchester, number 49, makes the tackle. And Vern, it may surprise you that Ithaca's running the ball, but the reason they're doing it is that Wittenberg has gone to a 4-4 defense. They've put in an extra defensive back because they're worried about the throwing game of Ithaca. And if they give you something, it's the running game when they take out that nose guard and use four alignment. So that's what Doug Benchko is trying to do. So far, they haven't executed. But the strategy is the right one. Second down, seven yards at the 45-yard line. Ferrigno gets it. Ferrigno's got a bunch. He's got the referee from behind, and he's got a first down at the 43-yard line as Bill Beach makes the tackle. I want you to answer me this, Vern. Is that statistic on Bob Ferrigno last year over eight yards a carry? Can that be right? Last year? Here you see Ferrigno, the cutback. He does that so well. Cuts back against the green and then just keeps piled up for those extra yards. First down and 10. Witt Wittenberg's defense now on the field a little longer than they wanted. Three wide receiver offense. Bench goal, right side, incomplete. Tipped in the line of scrimmage. John Dockery is our expert analyst today. First chance that John and I have had a chance to work together. I want you folks who are listening to know what Jimmy Butterfield, the coach at Ithaca, said about John. He says, I'll tell you what, we've been on television three times, and I've never seen a man do his homework like John Dockery. He's talked with all the players. John, I, I think the same thing. You're doing a fine job. Well, thank you. There's a look at John Dockery in his office. See, you didn't even know. They popped you on camera. Second down and 10. Benchko still has it, going to the right side. Stiff arm, still running. First down at the 32. How many times do you see it happen, right? It's all going Wittenberg's way. Two fumbles, and boy, all of a sudden, here comes Ithaca. Old Mr. Momentum. Here is interesting play. It's actually a quarterback counter draw keeper straight on. He's a big quarterback, 6'3", 200 pounds. And when he gets in the open field with those long legs, he can make some yardage. First down and 10. They go back to the 5-2 defense. Now they got four down linemen. Beg your pardon. Here's the handoff, Niccolo, right side. He's down at the 26-yard line. Tackle made by Jeff Manchester, number 49. Second down, he picked up a quick five. Leading rusher this year, John Niccolo. We've been talking so much about Ferrigno, sometimes we, we forget about number 22. Two fine backs. Gives him nice balance in that backfield. Two wide receivers come to the left side. One goes to the right side. It's second down. Well, officially, they're calling it six. Bill George over the ball. Benchko hands it off to Niccolo. He runs into a traffic jam at the 25-yard line. Tackle led by Dwight Porter, number 55, a sophomore from Cincinnati. 
Vern, you mentioned Jim Butterfield before. Did he tell you that he tried to recruit me when he was at Colgate? Imagine the success he would have had had he gotten me to go to Colgate. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Defensive backs never had problems with egos. <laughs> <laughs> Third down. Key play now for both these ball clubs. Third and six. Bench go. Counter option. He's still got it. He's got a first down inside the corner. How many times have you seen it, Vern? I mean, you find something that works and you go back to it. He just ran that play three, three or four plays ago. It was successful. This time he's got Ferrigno as an option, man, if he wants him. He doesn't want him. He makes a good inside, outside move and picks up that first down. Doug Benchko is doing it all himself. Chris Hardy led the way around with a block. Benchko, eight carries for 35 yards now. First down at the 18. Benchko calling at the line of scrimmage. Cubs left, caught, still has it time, and it is tipped by John Sexton at the line of scrimmage. And almost intercepted, they would have had, it would have been Katie by the door, Saxton would be still running. Jim Meyer, the intended receiver, look at it again. This is just a combination pattern with the two wide receivers. He gets a little pressure there and doesn't read the defensive back too well. You see Saxton there. Oh my goodness, he had open field all the way to the goal line. Saxton has 17 interceptions in his career at Wittenberg. Didn't get that one, it's second and 10. Blitz is coming. They pop it across the middle, and beautiful! Beautiful, Vern. I mean, you see the blitz, there are some, some things you can do, one of which is a slant to your out receiver, the quick slant, and that's what he did to Jim Duncan, you know, last year, last week, and here you see it. Beautiful read, a lot of blitz. You see it up the middle, pressure delivers the ball on the line. Duncan makes the good reception. They won last year on that last week on that same play. He came from right. behind for a touchdown, put him ahead against no. Carnegie Mellon. That was with 31 seconds to go. Here's the handoff to Ferrigno, and he does not get the touchdown. He's down about the one-yard line. Do you ever get the feeling that a quarterback catches fire? It feels that way that Doug Bench goes all of a sudden said, okay, things are going right, the confidence swells, and there's nothing you can do wrong. That's the feeling I have about him now. He's got his team on the edge of, on the verge of going in front for the first time today. Again, the three wide receiver offense, even down in the goal line. Bench go, long count, quarterback keeper, touchdown. Bill George, senior from Glens Falls, New York, opened up the hole on the left side. He's the center. Chris Hardy was also there. And Benchko goes in for the touchdown to put Ithaca on top. Here it is, Benchko just on the quarter. Good block, good block by Bill George. Takes it in for the score, puts him ahead. Tom Darling on to try and add the extra point. Snap is back, it's good. Kick is up, it's good. You know, we've been talking so much about Doug Benchko and you would think that Ithaca's 10 and two coming in, that everything has been his way this year. It hasn't. They have a second quarterback, Doug DeCarlo, who's played a lot of time, and there's been a lot of confusion at quarterback, and uh, Doug Benchko has won, won the job and has done really well today. And we'll be back right after this. From the legend that is Nikon comes the new Nikon EM, and from the Nikon EM comes... Hey, girl. Molly. This sharp. This clear, every time, and especially this time, because the Nikon EM is fully automatic. It even signals if there's not enough light. Is there enough light? Sure, no problem. So you get perfect pictures, and the Nikon EM is so easy to afford. The new Nikon EM, it's not just a camera, it's a Nikon. Goodyear Tiempo, official tire of the 1980 Winter Olympics, brings you Art Devlin, Vice President, Lake Placid Olympic Committee. On my own car, Tiempos are marvelous. And I think one of the smartest things we did was to put Tiempos on the Olympic cars. They're just great. Tiempo is the snow tire, rain tire, sun tire, one tire that does it all. The guy who designed this tire really knew what he was doing. Get Goodyear Tiempo, the all-season radio, and eliminate winter tire changeover. Through its affiliation with over 20 national sports organizations, the NJCAA affords its student-athletes the opportunity to compete in national and international events, including the Olympics, World University, and Pan American Games.
On the sideline, the young defensive back who was injured in the first half, Roger Brown, dislocated knee, and he is wearing an air splint, that plastic splint. They fight with air and keep the leg immobile. Ithaca has gone on top 14 to 10, their first lead of the ball game. And it was a drive ignited by two fumbles, not just one, but two. Wittenberg was moving, had a first down inside the 10-yard line, fumbled, held, Ithaca punted, another fumble, Ithaca recovered. They saw Moon. Avoids the helmet high tackle, and he is knocked down at the 32-yard line. Don Phillips made the stop. We've got 127 remaining in the third quarter. 11 play drive for 58 yards. And they ran off four minutes and seven seconds. Vern, here's where we find out a little bit about the character of the Wittenberg team. Those seniors have never lost a home game. They've won 36 straight. They're used to winning. And it's an all senior bunch. Hand off, Gracie King. Flag is down in the offensive line of scrimmage thrown by the umpire. John Bertino finally makes the tackle. We may get a holding call. 122 remaining third quarter. This is for all the marbles division three championship this afternoon. And they'll mark off half the distance. Offensive holding. It'll be first down again. You get the distinctive feeling that things aren't going the way Wittenberg would like them to go. The breaks have been going against them here. They're going to have to come up with a big play to turn that kind of momentum around. Undefeated, 11-0. Delaney doesn't like the football. I heard him say bum ball. <laughs> <laughs> bum ball. Balloon ball. <laughs> Coming up next, Army versus Navy. Navy favored to win that game, and if they do, they'll tie the series and begin some 80 years ago, 90 years ago. Here's the call. Handoff goes to Skip Buckley, picks up a quick six. Harry Moss made the tackle, along with Don Phillips. Auburn has taken a 3-0 lead over Alabama. Watch Harry Morris here, Vern. Plays off a blocker. He's one of those linebackers that can keep people away from himself. You know, the way you're supposed to, they teach you to keep those offensive blockers away from you. Play off them and make the tackle. Harry Morris can do that some kind of thing. Second down, 16. Pitch out to Tracy King. Buckley gets a Ooh. bit of a block of Bertino, but a nice play by Bertino. Great play by John Bertino. Cornerback reads that sweep. He has to decide now that he's coming. If he hesitates at all, the blockers are on him, and uh, the play is successful. Watch Bertino come underneath the blocker here and sacrifice his body to trip up number 21, Tracy King. Look at that. He's a transfer student, by the way, from uh, RIT. So Ithaca is benefiting from that transfer. Tom Rogers, whoops. That's the end of the third quarter. Time has expired. So we have concluded three quarters of play here at Phoenix City, Alabama. A 48-yard drive late in the third quarter has put Ithaca on top. We'll be back with the final 15 minutes right after these messages. Sears brightens your holidays with super values like this Kenmore dishwasher at a $50 savings. Has pots and pan cycle, power miser, and water miser. Now $269.95. And save $40 on Sears Best Automatic Garage Door Opener with digital control for convenience and security. Now $159.99. And Sears can arrange professional installation of these holiday gifts. Sears, where America shops for value. The 1980 Chevy Monza Coupe. Got your kind of features, got your kind of fun. Like white striped tires and tinted glass. Monza is the one. Formal roof with lots of glass. Monza is the one. Bucket seats, sports steering wheel, front disc brakes, and looks that appeal. A great price, but we've just begun. Lots more features, much more fun. Monza is the one. Got your kind of features, got your kind of fun. Chevy Monza is the one. Striving to win her first Olympic gold, two-time world champion Linda Fratiani. The 1980 Winter Olympics exclusively on ABC.
everything you ever knew about snowmobiles is about to change forever. For this is the year that the Skidoo snowmobile will go beyond anything you've ever imagined. The world's number one selling snowmobile. Now the world's number one way. Go do it. Franciscans and Worldwide Marriage Encounter. WKEF TV, Dayton 22. Okay. As we start the final quarter, the senior quarterback for Wittenberg, Chuck Delaney, has come to the bench. He has a minor sprained left ankle. Should be able to go back in, but he will sit out at least this one play, John Dockery. And Kirby Thompson, who's not played much at all, is in the uh, lineup now, number 11. Kirby Thompson, 9 of 20 for the year, 93 yards. That's a pretty good indication he hasn't seen a whole lot of action. Third down. He keeps it. Cuts it upfield, and Mike Beyond, he pops him up near the helmet. At the 32-yard line, it'll be fourth down. Mark Seaman was also in the area, and Tony Smith. There's Mike Biondi. Interesting situation for number 11, Kirby Thompson. Here he is. He calls his own number. Wants to get right in the action. I mean, he has a chance here to either be a hero or a goat. Depending on his personality, he'll, he'll take advantage of it, or else he'll be embarrassed. It's Dave tough Miller break. on the punt. Here's the kick. Fair catch called by Jimmy Duncan at the 36-yard line. Ithaca gets the ball back, and they've got 64 yards to go if they want to punch in another score. We are in the final quarter of the Amos Alonzo Stag Bowl in Phoenix City, Alabama. 14 minutes and 21 seconds remaining in the game, and Ithaca is on top. Holidays were made for Michelob. Holidays were made special friends. What better beer than Michelob for the holiday season? Special enough to make the right impression, friendly enough to show you care. No wonder Michelob has become a holiday tradition. Holidays were made for Michelob. With insurance, you want an agent who roots for you, right? The Fireman's Fund has some advice on how to find them. First, look for this symbol. But just as important, look for this symbol. For the man who sells our insurance, the independent agent. Because he represents not only us, but many fine companies. So he's free to get you the best possible deal. Look for the sign of the independent agent. Together with this symbol, we think you've got an unbeatable team. In the yellow pages, Fireman's Fund Insurance Companies. Fourteen ten, Ithaca on top. Fourth quarter with just over 14 minutes remaining. And Ithaca's got the ball back coming up a week from today, 5 o'clock Eastern Time, World Cup Boxing featuring squads from both the Soviet Union and the U.S. and the World Gymnastics Championships. From Fort Worth, Texas, at the Tarrant County Convention Center, Chuck Delaney on the sideline. They're working on that left ankle. He'll have at least a series of downs to rest and hopefully get that thing mended. Three wide receiver offense for Ithaca again. And Benchko will throw. Comes across the middle to Duncan. And he's hit by Bob Linton up at the 47-yard line. But it looks like he might have enough for the first down. That's slant in pattern once again. Duncan makes this play. See, the ball is thrown behind him here. Duncan reaches back, catches it, spins around, and, and uh, continues on for some more yardage. That's one you thank your wide receiver for if you're a quarterback. First down and 10. 47-yard line. Rigno has the handoff, and he's inside Wittenberg country at the 48. Knocked down at that spot. You know, you were talking about Ferrigno being involved in Japanese gardening before. Take a guess what uh, Doug Benchko does for a hobby. What's that? 
He's a magician. Oh, for God. <laughs> he's got these huge hands, and he's excellent with card tricks. I have a story for you after this. You saw the third quarter statistics at second down and five. Ithaca's got the ball at the 48-yard line. Borigno to the 45-yard line, two yards short of the first down. Jeff Manchester, number 49, makes the tackle. Benchko bet Jim Butterfield that he couldn't figure out a card trick that he was going to play on the field. So Butterfield said, okay. And the, and the stakes were that they wouldn't run sprints that day. Sure enough, Benchko did the trick. Butterfield didn't get it, and they got out of gassers that day. The whole team got out of it. <laughs> Third and two. Blitz is on again. He goes deep incomplete. And Benchko really upset with himself because he had Duncan open. Bob Linton was in man-for-man -man coverage deep. There's Jim Butterfield on the sideline. 51, 11, and 1. Interesting story on Jim Butterfield. He told me that he decided that he wanted to be a coach when he was 11 years old, influenced by a phys ed and uh, teacher and a coach that he had, and uh, feels that this is what he wants to do in his life. He wants to influence young men right here, and uh, he's certainly done a wonderful job on it. Dave Whalen on to punt. He's done a good job today. Pressure not blocked. Chris Fields comes up, makes the catch at the 19-yard line. So Wittenberg holds and gets the ball back with 12.42 to go in the fourth quarter of play. Glenn, we've talked about both coaches, and I got a chance to know them and, and to talk with them an awful lot, and I'm really impressed with the character and integrity of both. And the way I see it, you know, a lot of the players out here are not going to be professional players, and they're going to be coaches, and they're going to influence young men, and it's going to be that kind of a multiplier effect. So these gentlemen are having a profound influence on what happens to young men and the future. Here's Delaney going deep for Davis. Davis makes the catch, but he was out of bounds. Delaney back in there. Davis made the catch, but he caught it out of bounds. Take a look at it again. Delaney's back in there. I mean, this is a championship game. If you have a slightly sprained ankle, you come back. And he does come back and throws the ball here to Cliff Davis, his favorite wide receiver. And the question is whether Davis, his own momentum took him out of bounds or whether the defensive back took him out of bounds. Apparently, the referee felt it was a defensive back. Mike Biondi made the tackle. Shadows there kind of hampered our view of it. So it'll be second down and 10. Meso Moon in motion wide to the right side. Delaney pitches back to Tracy King. Drives around the corner, picks up three yards. That's about all she wrote as Jimmy Hoffman makes the tackle. I want to amplify on what you said. Uh, to me, one of the great things about, you can call it small college football, Division Three football, is that one-to-one -one relationship between the coach and the athlete. Really a kind of a special thing. And, a co and I talked to both coaches, and their doors are open for an athlete with a problem. They come in. Everything stops when someone walks into Jim Butterfield's office, and that's the way it should be because coaches are a profound influence on athletes. Third down, Delaney wants to throw. Has plenty of time, nobody open. He'll put it on his hip and run, and he has caught and dropped at the 27-yard line. It'll be a fourth down. Of course, you went to Harvard, which is not a, a football factory, needless to say. The emphasis is on the education. I graduated from a small school at Texas Lutheran. I was talking to Jim Butterfield yesterday and told him that. He says, well, do you happen to know a guy named Dr. Bill Cook, who's the chairman of our health department? I said, know him? Heavens, yes. He was our athletic director at Texas Lutheran. He said, that's right. Well, he's here. So I saw Dr. Cook a while ago. Talked to Dave Mauer at Wittenberg. Told him the same story. He says, you have to know Erno Dahl. I said, he was the most influential prof I had at TLC. He said, well, I was, he was our provost. So I've got an association with both schools through uh, knowledge of those men. There's the punt down at the 42-yard line. And Ithaca gets it back with 11 minutes and 14 seconds remaining in the football game. We've got a dandy game going on here for the Division III National Championship. We've got 11-14 remaining in the ball game. Wouldn't it be nice if batteries had gauges so you'd know ahead when you'd need a replacement? There's something good as a gauge better. The Railvac Long Life Long Storage Alkaline. Now you can keep spares and never do without. See, its energy elements are compacted under 10,000 pounds so that even after four years of standing there, it has more than 85% of its energy. Who needs a gauge? With Rayovac Alkaline, you can buy with confidence, buy spares with confidence, and never run out of gas. How did I get my men to smoke a pipe? I told Ted that the color of the bowl made an exciting contrast to the steely blue of his eyes. And Michael? He was easy. Smoking a pipe makes you look mysterious, I said. And then there was Steve. 
so sensible. I told him I'd rather see you smoke a pipe. He had to agree. And then to each I gave a Dr. Grabo, the pre-smoked pipe. They all love them. My men are so smart. Higher education, teaching, research, and service to the community. These areas are the concern of the approximately 3,000 colleges and universities located in the United States. Higher education searching for new approaches in meeting the world's demands. There's Sam Baker, the nose guard, number 53, the second player injured wearing number 48 in somebody else's jacket, but that is Sam Baker. There's Chuck Delaney working on that injured ankle. Ithaca's got the ball at their own 43-yard line, first down and 10. Benchko, the quarterback, has gone the distance. We've not seen Doug the car. Benchko will throw. Bumps once, goes deep, left side into double coverage, intercepted by John Saxton. Saxton at the 30, the 35, the 40. Coming to his left, and he is cut down at the 42-yard line. First interception of the game. That's his sixth of the year. And there is a flag back to the 28-yard line. That's what John Saxton does the best. We took 6-4, a lot of range around there. Plays center field, read the quarterback well and went and intercepted that ball. Let's take a look at it again, Vern. John Saxton. All right. Benchko here will, little play action, pumps, wants to go downtown. What he doesn't see is John Saxton reading the pump and coming over to help out the cornerback and make that play. Good run afterwards, too. <laughs> Just shucks off that wide receiver like Boy, a fly on his back. But the clipping call, very costly in terms of field position. They lost 27 yards from the 42 back to the 15. First down and 10. Got that rotten football in there again. I want to do it. <laughs> Somebody throw that thing in the lake. Get rid of it. <laughs> in the old days, Oakland used to send in deflated footballs to the when I played with the Jets against oh, the Jets. Al Davis wouldn't do a thing like that, would he? <laughs> there, <laughs> here's Skip Buckley. You know, there are rumors that they also water down the field out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Skip Buckley's. Uh, Today is a special day. When you're playing for a championship, we've talked about it all day long. Um, you have to come back. Chuck Delaney's come back. His leg is bothering him. Skip Buckley has had knee trouble, just ran the ball well. Somehow, the involvement and the intensity is the best anesthesia you can get for your pain. A day like today is exciting. Hand off right side. Goes to Buckley once again. Mesa, or Mesa Moon, rather, number 27. Mason Moon's been pretty quiet today, and he is really a game-breaking threat. Guy has great speed and can run with the ball, and he's also a great uh, pass receiver. Second quarter, Alabama has come from behind. They trailed at one point, three nothing. Stedman Sheely to Keith Paul for the touchdown. Seven to three, Alabama leads it. Roll out, Delaney gets a good block from Buckley, and he's up and out of bounds at the 30-yard line with the first down. You saw a good open field block by number 33, Skip Buckley, on that play. They need Skip Buckley. He's probably their best blocking back. He makes the yardage for King. And here he helps uh, Chuck Delaney get yardage also. Look at that score. Pittsburgh, 23, Penn State, 14. I can hear Joe Paterno now. Oh, yeah. That, that would be the fourth defeat for Penn State if they lose it. And that is really unusual at that school. Here's Tracy King coming to the short side of the field, and he is cut down by Bill Rosecrans, junior from Camelus, New York, number 58. Oh, yeah, number 58. You know, I know his brother. He was a Penn State linebacker, Rosecrans' brother. Here's a quick pitch. They're bread and butter to Tracy King, and watch Rosecrans come in here and make the tackle. He's done that so many times. His brother was a wild man linebacker at Penn State. I think that family has a little bit of, uh, of intensity football-wise in him. Vanderbilt still leading Tennessee. At one point it was 10-0, now 10-7 in the third quarter. It's second down and 10. Delaney has two wide receivers wide right. 14-10 ball game. Delaney flips it out to Tracy King. He finally controls it and does not pick up any yardage as Don Phillips goes over to level it. It'll be third and 10. Fine defense. Tony Smith, number 46, also right there. 
He's looking downfield, Buckley doesn't see anyone, tries his safety, dangerous because that's a lateral. King makes the catch, but uh, maybe he wishes he didn't. <laughs> It'll be third and 10. Where do you go, John? Put it up. You have to put it up. Cliff Davis, Meso Moon. You go to Meso Moon. Okay, Either number... one, Cliff Davis, Meso Moon. Moon is in the slot. Here's Delaney on the roll. Cliff Davis, great catch oh. at the 46 yard line, first down. Cliff Davis and Chuck Delaney have been playing for four years together, and they, they're the best of buddies. And uh, somehow, that kind of understanding of one another works as well as uh, practicing patterns. I mean, they just know where they're gonna be. Delaney delivers the ball with good zip. Davis makes a heck of a catch, an important catch, third and long. First down 10 with 8-11 to go in this game. That clock is becoming a factor. 14-10 the ball game. Delaney will throw. Now he'll run. Looks for blocking. Ooh. Nice move at the 50. And cut down at the 47-yard line. What a move he made to get around Bill Rosecrans, number 58. You have to like Chuck Delaney. Sitting on the bench a few minutes ago, his leg is bothering him, his ankle is bothering him. Here he rolls out, can't find anybody. Breaks back, and here's where all the blockers set up. You see those blue jerseys going, and they move on Rosecrans. Oh, beautiful. Kleinhammer finally made the tackle. It's second down and two. Hitch, oh, Rosecrans gets even. Rose Rosecrans remembered that last fake, and where is, where is Tracy King? Tracy King is on the bench. He's another injured player. This is a wise decision here. Rosecrans was just coming on the blitz, had Delaney, and it's just as well that he didn't pitch the ball. Might have been a fumble. Tracy King limping on the bench. Bill Rosecrans with a last tackle. Tom Rogers is in there now, number 24. It's third down and five. Delaney looks left. On his hip, stunning across the middle of Rogers at the 40. First down at the 39-yard line, John Laper makes the tackle. He was wide open right across the middle. Good play. Really, watch the faking here. Fakes, back sets up. It's just a little bit of a delay right over the middle. Makes good yardage. 6.37 to go in the game. 14-10, Wittenberg trails Ithaca. This is only the second impressive drive they have had. There's Tracy King. Looks like it might be a hamstring or his right thigh. Pitch out to Tom Rogers. Cuts up field. Back sound to the 37-yard line. First of two games this afternoon. This Division Three National Championship coming up next. Army versus Navy. Four o'clock Eastern time. Al Michaels and crew standing by for that one, along with Frank Royals. Our ABC personnel up there. Army versus Navy, 4 o'clock Eastern time. 45 minutes from now. Second down and seven. 5.55 to go. Meso Moon in motion wide right. Delaney back to throw across the middle. He had a one hopper to Cliff Davis, who was open. Davis was open at the 25. It'll be third and seven. Not only was Davis open, but number 88, the tight end, who isn't really that much of a part of their offense, was also open on a corner pattern. Sometimes teams forget about certain receivers, and Wittenberg does not go to their tight end that often. Um, and sometimes the defense forgets about them also, so it's wise to come back to him. Dave Maurer on the sideline looking a little worried about now. Bauer. Here's Delaney back to throw. Four-man rush. He goes left. One hopper to Davis, who was open again. It'll be fourth down. You have to wonder if his leg is bothering him a little bit. He didn't sit up very well, and he just tried to throw across his body with his arm and uh, didn't have anything on the ball. Only nine out of 21. They'll go for it. The field goal won't help him. Well, they're out of field goal range anyway. But with five minutes and 42 seconds remaining on the clock, this may be the season right here. Fourth down and seven at the 37, and they trail by four, and here comes Wittenberg. The moment of truth, Vern. Delaney has a man open. Face on the first down. We have a game on our hands. What a clutch fourth down. Completion. Mason Moon has been awful quiet. John Bertino slipped slightly on the play. Here's Delaney rolling out. 
Bertino, you can't see, it slips a little bit, recovers, but not in time. Meso Moon makes the catch with the first down. Once again, John, Delaney really didn't put any body into that pass at all. It was all with his arm. 11 touchdowns passing, 14 touchdowns rushing. He just came up with a clutch fourth down play. Meso Moon cuts up field, weaves through traffic, knocked down at the 21. Jimmy Hoffman made the tackle, 5-27 remaining in the game. Interesting adjustment with Tracy King out of there. They're going to Mesa Moon a little bit more on the run and on the pass. Mesa Moon is an excellent runner. He's a tailback at one time. Second down and five, 14-10 the game, 5-12 to go. Here come the Tigers of Wittenberg. Ithaca digging in now, the ball of the 22-yard line. Slot eye formation, left side, Moon in motion. Pitch out to Tom Rogers. Cuts inside the 20 and is down at the 16. He's got a first down and 10. Tom Rogers getting his chance. He's a junior, 5'10", 170 pounds. He's only carried 23 times for 98 yards. So this is a big day for this junior. He's been playing behind Tracy King just the way Tracy King played behind Davey Merritt. It's nice to see other people get an opportunity. And there, Tracy King on the sidelines. Wittenberg, first and 10 at the 16, 4.43 to go. Moon in motion. Buckley up the middle to the 10, to the seven yard line. Great effort by Skip Buckley. Skip Buckley, do you think that they want to win this game? Did you see Skip Buckley on this play? Makes half of it on his own. You'll see him get hit here in a moment. Watch his spin, and that's with a knee that's bothering him. Look at him put his hand down and go spin for that extra yard. A great block in that offensive line from number 74, Jim Gray, who got him up the middle. Timeout has been called by Ithaca. <laughs> Ithaca stops the clock with 4.13 remaining in the game. Wittenberg has a second down and two at the eight-yard line. In 1931, Texaco developed a new gasoline for emergency vehicles called Fire Chief. Not just for fire engines, but family cars too. In 1941, Texaco helped create a fuel refining process for the national defense. For tomorrow, Texaco is working on a way of turning America's plentiful coal into clean burning gas. These are some of the ways Texaco is making good use of America's energy resources. Texaco, we're working to keep your trust. This Christmas, light up your gift giving with a Kodak Extra Light 10 camera with built in flash. The action's sure to be there, so be ready in a flash with the Extra Light 10. And get all those sharp, clear pictures you might have missed, but you'd love to have. So this Christmas, give an Extra Light 10 from those built in flash people at Kodak. Next, one of the fiercest, oldest, and most colorful college rivalries, a classic clash, the Army-Navy game on ABC. Next Saturday, Wide World of Sports, 5 o'clock Eastern Time, World Cup Boxing Championships and the World Gymnastic Championships from Fort Worth, Texas. Jim McKay, Gordon Maddox, and Kathy Rigby will be at the Tarrant County Convention Center in Fort Worth, about 26 miles from my hometown of Colleyville have a chance to see them next week. That's going on, and you'll see that next Saturday. We've got a second down and two at the eight-yard line. Motion in the offensive line, the right guard move. That's Tony Ramsey, the senior. That'll cost him five yards. And John Dockery, it, it seems to me that apparently Wittenberg has really had problems inside the 10-yard line in pushing that thing in. Vern, you're exactly right, and, and Dave Maurer told me that he was a little bit worried when they limit the field on his team. They've had trouble. They don't have an overpowering offensive line. They rely on finesse and blocking technique to score and to move the ball. But in close, they've had their problems. So in a way, that penalty may be a blessing in disguise to give them more room to run and throw the ball, run that option. We'll see what happens now on second down and eight. Two wide receivers come left side. The tight end, Dave Frazier, is tight to the right. Delaney, under his center, Mark Short. Hands it off to Rogers. No, fumble. Ithaca's got the ball, and they're dancing on the sidelines, and they're jumping up and down in Ithaca, New York. Phil Bianco, number 43, comes up with the fumble recovery. 
the key turnover of the game, and it might have come down to that. There's timeout on the field, 14-10, still the score. To open a door on the rest of the world and step out, falling free, two miles, straight down. You go for it. You go for all the gusto you can get, making the most of now. From the life you live to the beer you drink, Schlitz, the one beer brewed with gusto since 1849. The official beer of the Winter Olympics. Go for it. We're not exactly alike. I'm wearing JCPenney plain pockets jeans, and I'm wearing the world's best-selling jeans. My jeans are made of tough, heavy denim with good looks and great styling, and mine have this fancy stitching on the back pocket. But plain pockets only cost you $12. J.C. Penny Plain Pockets. The big difference between us and them is the pocket and the price. I'll buy lunch. ABC's Wide World of Sports returns. Top amateurs battled in the World Cup, plus Nadia Komeni and Kurt Thomas expected in the World Gymnastics Championships next Saturday. Here's the play, John Dockery. Chuck Delaney on a sprint draw, gives to Tom Rogers. Rogers gets popped. The ball comes out. You see the helmet hit the ball, and that's Phil Bianco. Big play man for them. Number 43 comes up with the recovery. You know, they talked about Bianco and said he has the potential to be one of the best players they've ever had at Ithaca if he learns discipline. Super athlete. Give equal credit to Jimmy Hoffman, number 66, who made the hit that forced the fumble. It's first down and 10 with 4.06 to go. Benchko back in at quarterback is gone the entire ball game. Hands it off, right side goes to Ferrigno. One or two yards. Mike Dowds makes the tackle. Interesting situation, Vern. What do you do down here? You have the lead 14 to 10. You have the ball on your own 18 yard line. Do you go into your shell, try and run out the clock? knowing that the defense is going to be stacking, or do you do open it up and throw it? I t if I'm the guy, I open it up. I try and get out of there. Let's but then check. I'm sitting up here. <laughs> Bench go. You saw the graphic on turnovers. Four fumbles for Wittenberg now this afternoon. Here's the handoff that goes to John Niccolo and Dale Bradford. Let's recap now. Keep in mind that on the opening drive, Wittenberg had a first down inside the 10-yard line when Delaney fumbled. That cost them a possible touchdown. They held, there was a punt, they fumbled and lost on the punt. And then they lost the key one down here at the eight yard line. Next Saturday, Division 1A semifinal and the Division II championship, Lehigh versus Murray State. One of the games you'll see live, 1.30 Eastern time next Saturday. Third down and five. Bench go. Delay of game will cost them five yards. This game is not over yet. Wittenberg is going to get the ball back and have a chance to score. And uh, I agree with you. I don't think you can go into your shell in a situation like this when you're ahead by just a few points. I think you have to continue to play your game. If you go into a shell, you're going to give the ball back in good field position and put the pressure back on your defense. I think you have to continue to be play the way you've been playing all day long. Alabama now leading Auburn 14 to three in the second quarter. It's third down at 11. Here's another big one. Bench goes slips, comes right, caught it, drops the pin. Jeff Manchester and Joe Governors. Now then, <laughs> Wittenberg's gonna get it back, and not only are they gonna get it back, they ought to have it inside the 50-yard line. You know, Wittenberg was here last year. They were bridesmaids. They lost to Baldwin Wallace. They came back this year determined to wear that ring, that championship ring, to be Division Three champions. And they're not about to give it up just because they're down with two minutes and 25 seconds left in the game. Chris Fields will return Dave Whalen's punt. The clock is running. Here's the kick. It's a good one, but it's inside the 50. Fields comes left. Bertino knocks it. No, it's not Bertino. Fred Yapel, number 17. So 48 yards away with two minutes, 11 seconds remaining in the game. Liberty Bowl coming up on December 22nd, Tulane versus Penn State. Gator Bowl, December 28th, Michigan versus North Carolina. Sugar Bowl, we'll see. Don't know that one yet. It depends on what happens today. 
Here's Delaney, right side, man open, tip. Tony Smith knocked it down. Senior from Poughkeepsie, New York. Great play by Tony Smith there, knocked that ball down. He has four interceptions this year, almost had another one, and he's been really a pleasant surprise for that defensive team of Ithaca. Second Smith. down to 10, excuse me, John. Tracy King still out, must be a, a serious pull. 2.06 remaining in the game. Dave Maurer prowling the sidelines. 14 to 10. Now they got the rotten football back in there again. <laughs> Somebody put a spear through that thing. Carl Gennady will come in defensively. And we'll get the new football back in. Jim Butterfield facing the sidelines too. He knows what kind of a team he's facing. I mean, this is a team, as we talked about before, that with 35 points a game on the board, so they can score. Meso Moon in motion wide to the right side. Delaney rolls out, being chased, lets it go. No, flag is thrown, intentional grounding. Don Phillips had him wrapped up. I think it's gonna be intentional grounding. Let's see. Down. Now Cliff Davis is saying, hey, I was in the area, but he's not going to win the argument. The referee certainly took a while, too, to see if there was anyone in the area. There's Chuck Delaney's statistics. He's 10 for 23 for 74 yards. The intentional grounding, loss of down, plus 15 yards. It's all the way back to the 35. Before we get off the air, I want to thank, and timeout has been called by Wittenberg. Talk it over. Well, what, what plays do you have in your repertoire for fourth and 26? Fourth and 26, well, you have the Hail Mary. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Difficult situation, especially for a team that is, does not live by the pass, and uh, Chuck Delaney um, has a difficult task ahead of him right now. If you'll look right there, you can wave to the folks in Ohio and New York. <laughs> Hello there, everyone. <laughs> John Dockery is our analyst this afternoon, and we trust you have enjoyed this game. It has been a delight. Always fun to see the competition at this level, Division II, Division III. Marvelous athletic programs from both schools. 145 remaining. Well, I'll tell you what, the way it stands right now, we ought to go back and play a tape at the very top of the show where I said, okay, Dockery, who's gonna win? And you said, Ithaca in a close one. Did you have anything on it? <laughs> no, I thought, uh, my did... pick was, I thought Wittenberg might win it. It was hard to pick against Wittenberg. I mean, their success over the years is incredible. And Dave Maurer is one of those coaches that runs his organization, his practices so efficiently as to get the most out of his athletes. And it was tough to pick. I just felt it in my gut that it, Ithaca was ready today. Fourth and 26, and here it goes. Don Phillips, number 31, senior from Hamburg, New York. And lights are out. Ithaca gets it back with a 14-10 lead, and they've got 139 to kill. And Wittenberg has only one timeout left. Not much you can do. The, everyone in the stadium knew he was going to throw the ball. The pass rush comes. He does everything he can to get it, rid of it for an incompletion. Ithaca 10 and 2 for the year. Wittenberg 11 and 0. Ithaca beaten by Wittenberg 6-3 last year. Hand off to Ferrigno. They're going to just try and run out the clock. 134 remaining. The Ithaca team is going to be staying down tonight. Coach Jim Butterfield told me that he wanted to give his boys a little bit of a chance to celebrate. Might have shown a little confidence, huh, before the game. Yeah. Second down and nine. Butterfield, hopeful of winning his first national championship. 116. Wittenberg is out of timeouts. Beg your pardon. They cannot kill the clock. There's Doug Benchko. Got the nod, went the distance. He and Doug Dakar have split time most of the year, but we've not seen Dakar at all today. Dakar is a junior, Benchko his final game. Dakar has a couple of years of eligibility left. We'll see a lot of him in the future for Ithaca. Manchester makes the tackle on John Niccolo. We are in the final 50 seconds of the game. Now, Wittenberg did have one timeout, and they spend it. They call timeout with 53 seconds remaining in the game. 
Ithaca has a third down and four with timeout on the field. Chevy's national economy drive is on. Chevy's got the drive. Chevy's got it. Come get this free booklet on fuel-saving tips and take a special test drive that lets you see how good driving skills can improve your gas mileage to help you go farther on less. Chevy's got the drive. Come and get it. Come see for yourself the mileage and value in the new Chevrolet Caprice, Chevy Malibu, South Chevy Pickups, and all the new Chevrolets. It's Chevy's national economy drive. Uh -huh. Want to know four ways to help get better gas mileage? Tell us, Mr. Goodrench. First, air up. Keeping tires at recommended pressure can help save up to a gallon of gas per tank. Next, tune up. That can help save up to two gallons. Wow! Then, clean up. Get new filters. And slow up. You can go farther on a tank full. Keep that great GM feeling. Nice and tight full, Mr. Goodrench. With genuine GM parts. 53 seconds remaining between Ithaca and the national championship. Vern, the only question I have for you um, is, has the blimp arrived yet? <laughs> and the helicopter will be here shortly for the getaway, yeah. <laughs> I want you to do your Meredith impersonation and sing. <laughs> Third down and five. <laughs> Two wide receivers right side. 53 seconds to go, third and five. Bench go, hands it off to Ferrigno. He does not get the first down. It'll be fourth and two, but that clock's still unraveling. Now they will have to run one more play. 45 seconds remaining, so they can waste 25 of those seconds. And timeout has been called once again. Well, there was, I was uh, in error on the number of timeouts that they had remaining, so now they're out. You know, interesting before the game, talking to Dave Maurer, he told me that in a way he wished both teams could win this game, or at least, obviously one team has to lose, that they would have a good game. You know, a lot of, a lot of athletes are ending their career here today and have a nice memory of coming to a national championship and playing well and leaving with that memory rather than a lopsided game. And uh, I think that's what we've seen today. We've seen a really good game, both teams intense, uh, playing well. Wittenberg has ha had trouble holding onto the ball with their fumbles. But overall, um, neither team has anything to be ashamed of, especially Wittenberg. The three second half fumbles, so critical for Wittenberg. One at the 10, one at midfield on a punt, and the other at the 12. Fourth down and two, 40 seconds to go. Jim Butterfield, head coach. Now the clock stops on a change of possession if they do not get the first down. Hand off, Perigno jammed up, he got the first and 10, it's all over. He got the first down and 10. John Niccolo celebrating in the background. That does it. 34 seconds to go, they'll have to run one more play, but they got the first down at the 22. John Laper winding up his career, probably will make the All-American squad to be announced this weekend. Jim Butterfield, marvelous man. His mom and dad in their 80s are here from Dallas, Texas to watch this game, watch their son win his first. That's Chuck Kerr, the athletic director, with him. And we've got nine seconds remaining. Now delay of game call. And they'll mark off five incidental yards. Delay of game against Ithaca. 1975, Wittenberg 28, Ithaca 0. 1978, Wittenberg 6, Ithaca 3. They're going to make up for it in nine more seconds. There's Benchko falling down. And the celebration will take place now as the 1979 Division III National Champions and Jimmy Butterfield gets the ride off the field. What a great moment for any coach. And a deserved ride it is for Jim Butterfield. Dave Maurer. Unfortunately, there's got to be that picture to complement the other one in any athletic encounter. But a class individual comes across. He's looking for Jimmy Butterfield and 
They will shake hands and embrace, and there's a very poignant scene right there. Dave Maurer and Jim Butterfield talking it over. They got exactly what they hoped for today, and that was a tremendously competitive game between both ball clubs. But Ithaca, the 1979 Division III National Champions. Good. Now I can go to bed. Well, uh, wait a minute. I want to give you a gift while we're alone. Uh, it's uh, something just for you. A washer and dryer. How come will you be serious? Okay. Now close your eyes. Merry Christmas. Give her a diamond. It's forever. Where Westinghouse generates power, you'll find Westinghouse protection. We invented circuit breakers 50 years ago. Today, they protect utilities, as well as industrial machinery and homes. And now we're putting more protection where it's even more important. The new Westinghouse ground fault receptacle protects you. Westinghouse, the producer. Westinghouse, the protector. Westinghouse, a powerful part of your life. Isn't that a great scene? One of the Jordan boys, Ethica College, three brothers that play on the team. He and his girlfriend. The dream of a lifetime come true for any college athlete and the school's fans. A national championship, the Ithaca College Bombers have won the 1979 Division III national title. They will stay over in Phoenix City tonight, and there will be some kind of celebration for these fine young men and their fans who've come down here. One of them, as a matter of fact, 19 hours on the bus to get down here. <laughs> It's a long way from Ithaca to Phoenix City. I heard one fan talking on the phone to, I think, his parents, and he said, you know, this is a once-in-a-lifetime situation. I came 19 hours on the bus, and he was telling the person on the other end of the phone, I'm glad I did it. Doggone right. The celebration continues, and we will be back to cover this celebration as Jim Butterfield gets the congratulations of faculty and staff. We'll also be back with the scoreboard show and have a couple of interviews with some of these players from Ithaca College and Coach Jim Butterfield, I'm sure. Hopefully we'll be able to talk with Dave Maurer, the losing coach. We'll be back with a final look from Phoenix City, Alabama, right after this message. Like it or not, winter is here. And right now, to help you get through the messy weather ahead, Goodyear is making a special limited time offer on Tiempo, the original all-season radio. Now through December 5th, Tiempo prices start at only $37.95 for P155-80R13 Blackwall, plus $1.59 FET, no trade needed. We have sizes to fit popular import, compact, standard, or luxury cars. Get Tiempo starting at $37.95, only from Goodyear. Yeah, and all we gonna celebrate. <laughs> Beer, he's the champ, you jump. We want something special. Bull. Bull. Uh, uh, the Schlitz Malt Liquor Bull. It's a special premium brew that's in a class by itself. This Schlitz Malt Liquor's a bold brew. Let's go a few rounds with the bull. If you want to change up. Jim Butterfield, little confetti in his hair, doesn't mind at all. His team has won the 1979 Division III National Championship. They came from behind to win it 14 to 10. Yes. Yes. NCAA College Football, the Amos Alonzo Stag Bowl, has been brought to you by Goodyear Tiempo, the all-season radio. It eliminates winter tire changeover. And by Schlitz Malt Liquor, the special premium brew that's in a class by itself. Don't say beer, say bull, the Schlitz Malt Liquor Bull. Once again, the final score here in Phoenix City, Alabama this afternoon, the Ithaca College Bombers 14, the Wittenberg Tigers 10. The executive producer of NCAA College Football is Rune Arledge. The senior producer is Chuck Howard. Today's coverage of the Amos Alonzo Stag Bowl was produced by Lou Vopicelli, directed by John DeLisa. Our technical director, Mark Johnson. Our associate director, Dick Pittenger. Stay tuned for the Prudential College scoreboard immediately following the game. Be sure to watch the Army-Navy Classic at 4 o'clock, live from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, over most of these ABC stations. Now, this is Vern Lundquist, along with John Dockery, saying so long from Phoenix City Municipal Stadium in Phoenix City, Alabama. 
NCAA football, the Amos Alonzo Stag Bowl, has been brought to you by, once again, Goodyear Tiempo, the all-season radio. It eliminates winter tire changeover. And by the Schlitz Malt Liquor, the special premium brew that's in a class by itself. Don't say beer, say bull, the Schlitz Malt Liquor Bull. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. More people fly United to Hawaii than any other airline. This has been a presentation of the leader, ABC Sports, bringing you exclusive coverage when the world comes to America this February for the 1980 Winter Olympics.